Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the current episode of the USS of the app ah, of the Star Trek Adventures USS Nighthawk, as they embark on what could be their final adventure. Well, I know it's their final adventure because this is the uh, series finale, and I look forward to seeing what could possibly go right and go wrong here. Um, so, uh, not as much as the players, of course, but what the players might or might not be doing will be spoken of by the captain in his log. So, Captain Singral, please take it away. So I shall. Captain's log started 83466.7, June 20th, 2406. It is now clear to me that Director Chalmers have been has been behind the leaks in Starfleet Intelligence since the very beginning. Chalmers is the only one with the access and capability to release this classified information and maneuver the people of Starfleet Intelligence into a setup without any further witnesses. All these months I have been chasing the wrong leads, likely what he has intended for us all along. We cannot allow this to continue. The repairs to the USS Silent Vigil are complete, and we have successfully managed to recall both the Black Shield and the Naginata. Admiral Thomas Riker has taken to Earth to explain the situation to Starfleet Command. He has asked, not ordered, the remaining vessels to ensure that Chalmers does not escape. I intend to apprehend him with all due diligence. We have lived so long on a starship of secrets. Today, I am finished with this. I will not let fear rule this day. End log. Excellent. Well said, Captain. So... What starts is uh, you and you, the USS Black Shield and the USS Naginata, are currently at around planet Nimbus 3. Just making sure that all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed before making a push back to Zero Station to apprehend Mr. D or Director Chalmers. Uh, as you have passed overhead, the station immediately hails you. On, on channel is um, Lieutenant Satul, the female Vulcan uh, operator of the station. And you see that two of your uh, security guards are in the back, just keeping an eye on things, making sure that nothing goes terribly, terribly wrong. How may I help you, Miss Satul? Captain, I believe that it is imperative that you should be notified that with approximately 48 hours after your departure into the neutral zone, an all ships bulletin, or an all stations bulletin was put out. All Starfleet vessels are to be on the lookout for USS Nighthawk, and the crew of the USS Nighthawk have been deemed as potential treasoners, and all Starfleet vessels are, are so ordered to take you into custody should they ever encounter you. Well, that's entertaining. I've always wanted to be a renegade, but this isn't the way I anticipated it happening. Just the Nighthawk? Not the, not the Black Shield and the Naginata? No, sir. Those, t those two ships do not appear to be uh, listed as potential treasons. The USS Silent Vigil is mentioned. However, oddly enough, it is already listed as dis um, captured. Oh. What is the, uh, do we have confirmation that Admiral Riker managed to make it to Earth? Uh, tell you what, let's do a good, this will be a good, uh, communications test. Start getting you guys some momentum. Uh, so if someone wants to take probably the ops officer, I believe that's Rani. So let's have Rani do a insight plus, uh, insight plus engineering. And the ship can assist with communications plus engineering. Difficulty of one. That's one from the ship. I suppose I'll grab Rani. Sure. And that is one from Rani. So you get one momentum. Uh, so Rani, uh, before you guys left, a 
secure communication system was put in place between all four uh, ships. And as far as you're able to tell, it has not been compromised. Uh, the USS Silent Vigil is making its way to Earth. Right. So he's not there yet, as far nope. as we know. It's not there yet. Uh, from Narendra 3 to Zero Station, at max warp, it'll be about four days for you to get there. And from current location to Earth, it would take roughly two days. At ma assuming they want to travel at maximum warp. All right, then. Well... I don't necessarily know how long we'll be able to... We don't have the opportunity to delay, considering that Chalmers likely already knows what, what we're planning and that we're on to him. If that's the case, we'll still... We'll, thank you for this information. We'll continue to operate under black alert, and we'll modulate our ship's frequencies to see if we can be undetectable to the sensors at Zero Station and in anything else that's within the system. If worse comes to worse and we got people on our tail, we'll veer off from the Naganata and the Black Shield and we'll rendezvous with them after we shake them. Okay. So, um, because we are unfortunately short our chief engineer, I've made the Shran available for anyone that wants to roll. And I think this would be a good control engineering task for Mr. The Shran. And the ship will assist with uh, engines plus no well, engines plus engineering. Let's make this a actually whatever however much you succeed will be the difficulty that other starships have to beat to find you. Well, that's a complication. How do you feel about threat? I like threat. I'll take threat. So, that is assuming, of course, that who wants to pick up the Shran? I guess I can. Sure, um, I got he's... him going right oh, now. Okay. okay. Uh, so, control engineering for the Shran, please. And I'm going to use that momentum just to make this good, I hope. Okay. And good, you have made it. That is four successes. So, okay. Um, and I'm assuming you're let me buy that complication off with threat. Please, thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's... And did we get any momentum out of that? Uh, no. You. That's the difficulty. Okay. Others now have to beat to find you. So they have to roll five successes. Worth it. Yeah. yeah. In other words, good luck. All right. Uh, so what speed do you guys wish to make your way to um, Zero Station? Or is there any other way you wish to do it? Well, I'd like to see if we can get a um, a layout of Zero Station. Ah. And even if GM doesn't actually have a map for it, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, you know, in character, I'd like to see if we could start planning our route. Of course. Um so, Zero Station, let me just pull up the picture of it. One second here. Um, where is it? There it is. Nope. Just moving things about. So, I'm just going to bring you to Zero Station so that you can at least have a look-see at it. So, Zero Station is hidden in the gravity well of a dying star system. Uh, the system itself is completely uninteresting, and thus z that is how Zero System has basically avoided the sight of you know galactic powers at large for as long as it's been around. Uh, because you, you have been in Starfleet Intelligence and have been to Zero Station, you know a few things. Uh, one, it's construction is approximately uh, 70 years old. However, it has been modified, retrograded, up, upfitted, and uh, blinged out constantly over the years to keep up with modern security technology. <clears throat> it usually has at least one uh, ship in orbit, usually one of the, usually one of the uh, Phantom class escorts. 
Uh, overall population on the station, despite its size, is only about 400 people, most of which are non-coms. They are an analysts, uh, communication, or communications, handlers, that sort of thing. But it still has a decent security per security and defense roster. Its armaments are fairly standard. It was it's believed that its armament, or if it's overarmed, then it will just draw more attention to itself. And it ha it has uh, several or it has a fairly extensive dry dock system, even though it's rarely used. Ah. And aside from that, that's base. And it's got approximately 80 decks on it, even though most of it is either m mothballed from days where, it, where it's no longer necessary to have that much space, or a lot of it has been repurposed into computers or secure communication equipment or other techno babbly things. Speaking of techno babbly things, mm -hmm. um, are do we still have the fake transponder code going that we created as an advantage as before to get where we were at now? Um, just because so much time has passed, um, I'm going to say no on that. You'll need to get more momentum okay. to recreate that advantage. Sure, sure. No yep. problem. I was just thinking about it when, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, do we still have the four um, torpedoes that are anti-shield torpedoes? I believe that you do, yes. Okay, Roger. <clears throat> All right, well, likely... Obviously, if we if the Nighthawk shows up and we start going in to immediately apprehend Chalmers, that's a terrible idea. And even if that's the station, regardless of whether the personnel are mostly communications techs, they are. I mean, it's still us against them. Mm -hmm. We need to we need to figure out a way to extract him. Our, our advanced transporters could be helpful, but uh, considering that these things were installed at Zero Station, we need to find a way to make sure that Chalmers doesn't have a way to negate that advantage, if that's the route that we decided to take. Great, because I'm assuming that they're... That's my first thought, too, but I'm assuming that they're going to have something to stop that from happening. There are two things that I'm, honest, that I'm mostly concerned about. It's the possibility of him escaping the station and the system, and uh, possible... Uh, station defenses in and of themselves even though we got a pretty good rundown of what we have I don't know if there's anything else that he's added to his arsenal considering that we've given him so many goodies over the few, last few few months where is our um, where's my where's my fun Akashi uh, if that's so eager to please I believe that he's still on ship uh, yes yeah. you haven't given yeah you haven't had the chance to offload him anywhere so no, we haven't. We might also want to check with him because Chalmers had him for a spell. That's true. To see if Chalmers did anything with him. And they had had such a great rapport with the uh, Akashi. She might be the, the good one to help interrogate. Or not interrogate. Friendly conversation. <laughs> Well, and then first. the other thing is if we do get Chalmers right now everybody thinks we're rogue and until Riker gets to um, the Starfleet Council and the Admiralty and explains it we're the the bad guys True. you can say we're the baddies I got something crazy to throw out what about some of our friends? Have we made friends? I, I was well, going to say, I don't know if we have any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I meant with the, the Vitross or well, with... With and our friends. <laughs> well, we got somewhere, <laughs> Drew. Somewhere. Or, I mean, Togi's people we have. 
we have i mean we've made connections with quite a few people out there i mean i mind you we're in the alpha quadrant now there's not a lot that the the concern with that is that there many of them are in the expanse especially yeah. the people that are on deep space 15 and i don't know if they even have a qsd tag available if we if we want to send them an encrypted st subspace message so True. i'll ask how how long would how long would that take us if we wanted to um bring um maybe some f people from uh ds15 taking the luna class ship yeah that they got over there uh, so you want to hmm create the advantage by bringing in people from another game an interesting That's idea right. so um and we'll do this all tomorrow night <laughs> <laughs> nope, can't happen tomorrow. Uh, uh, so what can happen is so Hold on, let me see if Scotty's on and uh, uh, let's see if he's on the other board. No. Uh, <laughs> the Midas array is the quickest way of communicating. Um you would have to send a, a communication through there, out to there. But thankfully the Graviton catapult is operational and can pretty much get anyone back there to the Alpha Quadrant instantly. Uh, let me pull up my map here of the um, Alpha Quadrant so I can see about how long it will take someone who arrives at Tellarite, or Tellar. Uh, let's see, which is over here somewhere. You know, this isn't our fault for trying to uh, get under the feet of our GM. It's their fault for not being available right now. They Precisely. should have expected this. Okay, Clearly. so you're actually in luck. Uh, Shizno's the only one online. I <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so from uh, Tellar to Zero Station at warp 9 point whatever, it would take roughly uh, one day's travel. Alright then, well, I mean, it's quicker quicker than Admiral Riker. That is true. And to, but to, how to get them the message? Any type of communication that we send out there. And technically, they 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 got the warning that we're wanted men, so we have to... exactly. Mm. And <laughs> Palmer's definitely has you know little uh, algorithms in place to send him on anything remotely hinting at us and he knows we're going to try to contact these people he could do it as a diversion to try to smoke them out uh, I'll, have, I'll never hear the end of that from Captain Crawford if we live through this <laughs> <laughs> well you could send a message that sounds like it's encoded but it's not encoded You'd like you just Piggybacking. wanted to know if you would, yeah, I have, you know, I have an rain idea. in Spain falls mainly in the mountains. <laughs> I have an idea. So the um the, t the temporal uh, investigation agent that I contacted that I did offload all of our um our logs to. Yep, Mr. Mulder. Oh, yeah, Mr. Bo Mr. Mulder. I'd like to hit him up. And get him to contact Deep Space 15. I did the guise of a temporal incident. Well, Lord knows uh, Captain Crawford's certainly caused his uh, fair <laughs> share of those. So, okay. Uh, tell you what, let's make a roll of this. Uh, so, your communication. Let's op let's go to the bridge. Uh, Mr. Kaus is no longer here. Instead, it is Captain Crawford. Or not Captain Crawford. Captain Sengral. I'm mixing up series. There we go. Sorry, my fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. Completely and utterly. Okay, so. Uh, you establish your com communications to Agent Mulder. You can see that he is busy at work. He has some sort of ancient-looking gizmo in his hand that is that as soon as he touches it seems to split into four separate pieces. And as soon as he realizes that you're talking to him, 
all four pieces fall apart on the ground. <clears throat> he sort of shakes his head. Uh, captains, captains and Grawl, I see that you are still in one piece. However, you are apparently wanted by the authorities now. Please tell me that the crimes you have committed is not temporal in nature. I can assure you for the time being it is not. But I'm contacting you because of that very event. As you know, not too long ago, I recently told you. I offloaded all the Nighthawks logs and told you that in one month, if you didn't necessarily hear from me, that I'd like you to necessarily take the information contained within them to the Federation authorities. Well, I understand how suspicious that looks like, but I'm going to need you to advance that timetable. Suffice to say that me and my crew are not traitors, and the information that I gave to you would have proved our innocence. Where is, um, is the department, it's temporal investigations on Earth? Uh, yes. Did they, you say? Yep, their center is on Earth somewhere. Okay. Agent Mulder, if you haven't necessarily taken the time to do so, it is now that I, that I encourage you to decrypt th those logs and decide for yourself what exactly is going on here. I understand that this is atypically not your department, but your duty to the Federation comes first and foremost. And so does my own. And you'll see I'm telling the truth. Uh, roll me a presence plus command, please. Difficulty of one. <clears throat> That's three successes, so you get two momentum. Mulder swivels around in his chair and looks at Scully, or Investigator Scully, who is obviously not trying, or who is trying not to appear as if she's listening intently to what's being said. She simply shrugs, and Mulder just nods very well. I shall... I shall come... Truth I is shall... out there, sir. I shall investigate. That is, after all, what we do. After all, it is often that the wrong choices in history have a profound impact on the future. If we have an opportunity to ensure that we don't go down a path that history will look back on us, and at that point, invest Investigator Scully literally reaches over his shoulder, grabs the data disk, and waves and disconnects. Oh, that's fun. I mean, <laughs> well, even if he's going to disconnect, I'm still going to give him that message. Uh, oh, yeah. Nope. You know. Oh, no, they're doing it. Uh, that was oh, her okay. way of cool. just preventing you from listening to a rather long monologue about time. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> well, maybe he can... Uh... Not only contact DS15, but get to Earth faster than Riker since he's already there, you know? So. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Since we are indeed wanted, I'm slightly tempted to actually give in to Chalmers' gambit, but I think that's a bad idea if we don't necessarily have a way to uh, get out of the trap if we're going to spring it. Preliminary plans is that I'm thinking that we uh, let the Black Shield and the Naginata go on ahead. Maybe we could uh, semi-distress our hull, make it look like they actually had to fire upon us. Okay. No actual damage that was taken, and just take me into custody. Ooh, interesting idea. If okay. we take the captain into custody, is there a way that we can attach like a, a very low frequency comms unit on him to be able to transfer back to us and potentially send out <laughs> to everybody, hopefully to get Chalmers to basically fess up? I think we could. Yeah, you can try. But I don't think he'll like where we have to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a look over to the captain. <laughs> well, we could amputate the big toe. And... <clears throat> I'm not doing the procedure. No, you have a qualified chief medical officer for that. <laughs> we do. 
Well, I mean, it could always be. A toes can always be reattached or regrown. And although I'm not necessarily so keen on the procedure, as long as we use enough an anesthetic, I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> you guys had to have so much fun on that Orion planet. Do you guys <laughs> don't remember me dressing up and uh, putting putting a knife in my boot, but sad I didn't go down? Let me let me, <laughs> let me give a good let me give a good scene of Chalmers as well. Make make it look like you roughed me up well. Ah, okay. So we're going to rough up the captain and implant a tiny communicator into his body somewhere. Cool. I volunteer for the roughing up. <laughs> that sounds perfectly acceptable to me. So let's we're do this. Too eager to, yeah, too eager, too eager, Commander. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's do this in sick bay, where you know if he gets too eager, at least there's a chance the captain might be put back in one piece. Well, Vade needs the practice, so. Oh. Oh, you want Vade to punch the captain? Well, she could use the practice. Oh jeez. Uh, well, we're all down to sick bay, where Helsing and Vade are arguing over who is going to punch the He's captain. Going to punch the captain. Coax no. is just looking. Kind I'm the nervous. first officer. I can do it. <laughs> I know we're I know we're rogues and we're traitors, but we're not Klingons. <laughs> and as soon as he says that, I punch him. Ah! <laughs> yes. Okay. Is the captain going to resist? No. Okay. Uh, just but I will put my fists up. But I won't resist. I won't. I won't throw a punch back. Okay. Uh, see, Vid, you have to do it when they're not expecting it. Roll me stress. Uh, roll me challenge dice, please, Helsing. I won't roll all of them. Aw. Mean right hook. <laughs> Just mean right hook. <laughs> Here you go. Well, I'll turn him in. Yeah. That's a lot of um, challenge. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. What's... Sorry, I had to. Yeah. Uh, what's your stress? What's your maximum stress, Captain? Uh... 12. Okay. Uh, well, you've uh, suffered two. Can you suffer more than one injury if you take ten? I don't know. I'm not looking those up. I'm just going to say that you take a massive sucker punch to the probably the rib cage, I think. Or Helsing, would you think the face be better to punch? The, the face bleeds more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so. Oh. Yes. And see. Unfortunately, you want to do multiple. I don't think strikes the to make it look like he was really beaten up. He, he, I know that was the problem with such a good role. Well, considering <laughs> his jaw is now broken and killed any really good speeches. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I wanted Vay to do it. Uh, okay, uh, Doctor Coox just face palms mentally. He winces at the same time that the captain takes the hit. Uh, captain, <clears throat> you wake up on the bio bed with uh, Coox running a uh, medical tricorder over you. He's smiling in his uh, Betazoid in his Beta Z ways, and he's just shaking his head. He holds up a mirror, and you can see that uh, two of your teeth have been knocked out. And thanks to the uppercut your, that you just suffered, your nose has um, become horribly disjointed. Oh well, I'm glad I could. I'm glad twice in my life I've been punched by some sort of Elsa. Now will that give him the two black eyes? <laughs> well, technically, I got to punch you the first time, so it's only fair that I got the. <laughs> Coox just looks at Helsing. Uh, you know, Commander, had you ins- had you given me enough notice, I could have e- easily uh, applied a dermal... Uh, I could just have stimulated his uh, skin to make it appear that he's been beaten up. You know, under safe, well, proper medical conditions. Well, you can do that a couple more times. Just to make it... We have to make it look like he actually got beat up. <sighs> He sighs. 
<laughs> it's okay, Doctor. Why? <laughs> you, you don't you don't like this smi this handsome face as I smile with my broken teeth. <laughs> now we need to talk about his toe. Let's not and see what we did. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, you currently have two momentum. Uh, so you can spend that two momentum to create the advantage of, you know, just having the communicator not be found. Or you can have it look like, or you can spend it to create the advantage that, you know, uh, Mr. Singral will completely pass whatever medical tests are done. So which way do you wish to go with it? And do we want it to be a communicator? Or do we want it to be an emergency transponder to make whatever emergency teleport we can do would happen I ha or I mean, increase the chance can't we make it both considering at least i've wanted coax to send my work on those those implants that i hope we never would have to use but in this case i yeah. don't mind putting things in my head that work as a transport slash communicator at the same time okay all right if that's how you wish to do it then sure we can spend the two momentum to create that advantage. All right. So let me un. So this is going to the whole operation slash you know recovery period is going to take about a day's out of your tra a day out of the Night Nighthawks travel time. Uh, <coughs> what is your desire to do with the? Uh, with the Naginata and the Black Shield? Are they going to be coming in with you, or are they going to be heading ahead? I think we transfer me to either the Black Shield or the Naginata. Okay. And they bring me in, and the Nighthawk could stay and shadow them as long as, every, as long as the rest of the people on those crews are on the same page as us. Oh, believe me, uh, both uh, suit or Commander Ty and Commander Truel are totally loyal. And their crews Swell. are. I Definitely. So. Swell. Well, and just upset they didn't get to punch you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd rather be trunched by Helsing than the Big Turtle Man, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. One of you can um, head over to the Black Shield or the Naginata if you wanted to... Uh, you know, answer any of Chalmers' questions and bring me in, or we could just hand hand me over and they can handle it. Well, you, Commander Bashir, will obviously stay to command command the Nighthawk. If Halsing wanted to be the one, or any of our other other security officers wanted to bring me in, as an addition to make it look legit, that'd be fine too. The question yeah. is, do we want do we want the rest of the Nighthawk to look complicit or not? I don't think we do. I don't think yeah. I question it yeah. too much. I think we keep the whole Nighthawk out of it, that Naga Mountain and Black Shield just were able to take us down to the point where they transported you over. All right, then. Well, the Nighthawk okay. keeps his distance, and uh, they uh, take me into custody. Cool. Okay. And they, with the story that they went and took us down to the point they could send a a boarding party on the bridge just enough to get the captain and back out again to answer those or, questions okay. or on honestly you could do the um uh commander helsing could be the one that's taking you in i mean he could be the one that tacked you and brought you to the black shield or whatnot and i'll lay mm -hmm. back with uh nighthawk that's up to helsing i want to order him to do that i don't know if Charmers would buy it. Whatever is more believable. You know, having I, th I don't, don't know either. Quick, and we need right. to move quick. All right. Well, we need to move quickly after afterwards anyway to ascertain exactly where he is and what's going on. All right. So, in that case, we're gonna go with uh, the majority of the crew, the Nighthawk was loyal to me until the, fa the fact that they found out that they think that I betrayed him, which is why the Black Shield and the Naginata fired on us okay. and took me into custody. During that struggle, it's, it's just me that's going on over there. Alright. 
Okay, um, because this is going a slightly different direction than I'd like, or well, than I planned, um, and I don't know why I wasn't planning this in the first place. Uh, instead of me just making things on the fly, I'd like to take a few minutes just to prepare the set pieces and stuff so that we have a good story. So let's take a 10 minute break while I prepare things and we will be back momentarily. Sorry about this, folks, but I would much rather have a well played off finale than one that I am winging completely. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, sorry about the impromptu uh, delay, folks, but let's get this show back on the road. So, uh, the next day or so in travel is going to be fairly slow, as the USS Nighthawk undergoes some cosmetic, uh, some external cosmetic surgery to make it appear worse than it actually is. Uh, the Captain Singral, you and Helsing, I believe, are heading over to the USS Black Shield for yes. transportation. Yes. Okay. And they will... And, with, uh... oh. and before I go, mm -hmm. um, I talked to uh, Loxley and let her know that if anything comes around, I have to call on her. I'm going to let her know that I'm going to tell Chalmers that she and a few other of the security personnel I know are not loyal to Bashir, who was totally behind and with the captain and all that. So if we need to get back on the Black Shield, I, I left behind a cell that we can, can contact. Now I can have communications, hopefully, back and forth to the, okay. to the Nighthawk if we need it. Cool. Before I... Uh... We go over to the, the uh, Black Shield. I'd like to make a uh, all hands bulletin. Okay, might as well do that from the bridge. Go ahead, Captain. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll I'll have a video as well too. So stand by from a message from the captain. Do you need any makeup? No, I <laughs> want them to see my busted face. Okay. <laughs> so this is Captain Singral. Clearly, we are heading into territories that hopefully no Federation officer would ever want to find themselves in. I apologize for leading you down the sequence of events. And I apologize for the difficulties that this mission has, has put on you, yourselves, your families, and everybody else that you care about. I know over the course of everything that we've done that we've had to make some difficult choices. And I know being ostracized, especially for things that you didn't do by your own people just makes things worse and worse. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have a duty to continue to perform. And it's at our lowest point is what makes it important for us to right this wrong. Director Chalmers is a traitor to the Federation, to Starfleet Intelligence, and to you. And I hope over the course of the next few hours that we're able to write this, we're able to write this wrong. I trust you completely and implicitly. And I know you'll do what needs to be done. I thank you for your strength and I thank you for your support. Sengral out. There isn't a dry eye on the bridge, except for possibly Togi. I don't think he can tr cry, but yeah. with that, uh, Commander Truel hails over from the Black Shield and says, it's time. I'm ready. 
Black Shield to, uh, oh, Nighthawk to Black Shield. Two to transport. And with that... Good luck, Captain. Uh, what, whatever oh, Captain and... Singral's reply is, is lost in the dematerialization. And I'm going over with a Type 2 and a Type 1 concealed. Okay. So, what we're going to do is while the USS Nighthawk waits for a signal, what that signal is, we'll find out eventually, uh, the, US, the USS Black Shield and the USS Naginata will make their way to Zero Station. As, as you can see, waiting for them at Zero Station is the USS Scryer and a ship that is not rec immediately recognizable as a known class of Starfleet vessel. It, on its surface, it, uh, nah, its uh, registry number or registry name is the USS Enigma. It appears to have once been a galaxy class, or its design specifications are very similar. Um, Singral and Helsing, you're not privy to the talk that is going on between uh, Commander Truel, Commander uh, Ty, and Director Chalmers, but it is made very clear that you are to be brought aboard immediately. And so begins the potentially the most lo the longest shuttle ride of your life. Well, we'll go there with a smile on my broken teeth. <laughs> I am sorry about that. No worries. And so hey, we're in if, if I make it through this, then I'll still have the uh, command permissions to write you up. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Damn, so we are point. like literally parked as close out of sensor range as we can, full black alert and uh, cloaking device on. Yes. And just to make sure, uh, our modifications to black alert carry out not being detected by a uh, Station Zero or the other vessels is in place from last session, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. And the shuttlecraft uh, is instructed to dock into docking bay 12. Where? Oh, that's the wrong sheet. Where the captain and Grawl. Mr. Helsing. Let's see. So we have Singral. We have Helsing. And we have Director Chalmers. And you are being escorted by Commander Truel. <clears throat> the secure ah the uh, security station to a shuttle dry dock bears a significant amount of similarities to that of a standard TSA checkpoint. Several different scanners are embedded into the walls of the narrow hallway that you walk down. It's very uh, it's very obvious to anyone who well has a keen sense of observation such as yourselves that the reason you were brought to one of the, to one of the sh ah, one of the external shuttle bays instead of say one of the internal dry dock ones is this added measure of security okay well i just in case that uh, director chalmers and the rest of security doesn't necessarily find out about my implant I'd like to you know deactivate it mm -hmm. just to make sure it doesn't show up on sensors Yep. No, you spent the um, advantage to make sure that it doesn't get detected, so... Okay. Yep. Just in case if I had, oh, you yes. know, mental control over it, I wanted oh, to yes. make sure. Uh, Commander Truel's bulky f uh, frame takes up most of the 
hallway. And Commander Helsing, you have brief thoughts about uh, seeing if Commander Trull would be more than would be interested in, you know, joining up with the Nighthawk crew because he makes a very good mobile sand ba- sandbag. <laughs> Uh, eventually, you are brought through a uh, series of sliding doors. Each one has a security officer watching monitors on the other side of an obvious blast-proof window. And finally, one of them gives a silent thumbs up, and you are brought out into a fair, into a much nicer hallway. Its decor lessened slightly by three security officers with Type 3 phaser rifles, and Director Chalmers sort of leering behind them. He takes a step forward and clasps Commander Trull's hands in his own. Ha! Finally. I'm so I'm so glad that we were are able to get the captain of the most traitorous at least one of the traitorous vessels behind bars to answer for questioning. Captain Sagral, I'm here to Make it official that you are under arrest, blah de blah blah you'll have right to trial, blah de blah blah if they'll ever find your body, blah de blah blah Now, and he looks at Mr. Helsing, you made the right choice bringing him in. I'm so glad we did not, I'm so glad I didn't have to resort to other means of coercion. Well, the Black Shield did some did enough damage to the to the Nighthawk as it was, and seeing as Singral was a, I'm not going to call him captain anymore with the threat that it, you're saying, you got to come into the Federation, you got to come into Starfleet for, to answer for the crimes. Right. But not all the Nighthawk was with them. There's still some back there that are still loyal Starfleet. Good. We'll sort through them. Have a nice, good public trial. As public as it can be, of course. Several inf- several records are, of course, going to have to be redacted in the name of Starfleet Security. After all, Captain, can't have you going against a true patriot like myself. As the uh, security guards uh, flank up around uh, Captain Singral who I assume is bound in cuffs. Correct, with my hand on his shoulder, pushing yeah. him forward. Director Chalmers is leading the way, talking fairly loudly and not really caring which passers-by hear him gloating. Uh, I'll do my best to continue to look feigned and mm-hmm. angry. Okay. Um, Mr. Singral, your uh, empathy is able to pick up um, sev- uh, extreme waves of, I guess, pride is the best word to come out of Director Chalmers's mind at the moment, plus a bit of giddiness and enthusiastic. At me or at the situation at hand? At the situation at hand. Okay. <clears throat> okay. You are taken to a brig. Uh. Actually, no, you're taken into a fairly expansive security office, which may or may not look very similar to that of uh, Starbase Deep Space 15, because there are not many uh, security centers of this size. Uh, Two of the uh, security officers branch off and head into separate uh, duty stations. Uh, Chalmers waves at uh, Truel to just wait in a corner for a few minutes and he'll be out for debriefing as he does so uh, Chalmers says oh by the way I'll need to see the I will need copies of the sensor logs from both the Black Shield and the Naganata need to make sure everything is properly correlated for the upcoming trial also if we know what sort of damage we did to the Nighthawk we should be able to send any Starfleet vessel out there probably the Enigma I like her now in here as he opens personally a security cell and without actually giving Singral a choice pushes you in and closes and seals it up. I've given you so many toys, Director, and I see you got a new one. Where did the Enigma come from? 
He smiles. Ah, guarding class. Great ship. You know, it took me about 40 years or so. You know, not many people were... Not... Here in the aftermath of the Borg invasion, several galaxy-class husks were just sitting there in various states of disrepair, being towed to the scrapyards. I, being a visionary, had an idea for them. So, I, in my younger days, I was able to allocate resources and ensure that what the cla the new guardian class cruisers once they entered service would be the best prepare us for the next wave of uh invasions to come cuz there will be another one Sengral. after all you you've seen what's out there the tholians are tearing themselves apart the breen have access to husnock weapons how long do you think the klingons are going to be until they decide it's time for another genocide not going to let, not going to sit back on cool my heels waiting for them to make the first move. No. I'm going to be prepared. You know what? You are right. I have seen what's out there. And to be quite honest, it's no longer the other people that are, that we share space with that are that are my primary concern anymore. Nope. That's why Captain Singral. He looks at the two security officers and says, Why are you still here? Get! Can't you see I'm debriefing? This is way above your pay grades. And the two of them just decide to vamoose. Uh, Mr. Helsing, if you could please roll me an insight security test, please. Uh, difficulty, oh, of, difficulty of two. And if you have uh, countermeasures or infiltration, those would be good things to have right now. Countermeasures, infiltration. Yeah, that'd be a good focus. And sadly, we don't have any more momentum. You don't, because you insist on spending it all to get advantages. I'm okay with that. Would you care for a threat? Sure, I'll take more threat. Well, that's five successes. Uh, so that is, I believe, three momentum. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Helsing, as soon as the two security guards leave, uh, you can't help but notice that there are several phaser emitters uh, in the ceiling that begin to power up. Just in case, probably. But just because there's no guards in the room doesn't mean Chalmers isn't prepared. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. And Chalmers just goes back to looking at Singral once the doors are closed. That's why it had to be you, Captain. You're too sentimental. No place for sentimental officers and Starfleet intelligence. Nope. Not under my watch. Has to be hard. May be able to make the decisions to ensure that, that we are the sword and the shield of Starfleet. Ensure that the Federation is protected. That's necessarily our job, though. I thought our job was intelligence. We're here to assist them in making the best choices possible. Not necessarily take it on for ourselves. Nope. Wrong. Sorry. Wrong answer. Our job is to know. Our job is to understand, and our job is to act before threats can become... Well, before the... Before the threats be can become manifest. No, the... In their day, Section 31 may have had a couple good ideas on that matter. But they went about it the wrong way. Nope, all of this cloak and dagger bullshit. Nope, not going to happen. Not under a proper watch. At least now there's some accountability. Me. Well, I suppose I can't help being sentimental. I mean, I was born this way. <laughs> but in any other case, though, <laughs> to hear you actually praising Section 31 is... It's not necessarily something that I'd expect from you, Director. I mean, sure, they did some things right, but... And don't get me wrong, the, feder the defense of the Federation is first and foremost, but... That doesn't necessarily mean that we need to go behind the backs of Starfleet itself to always do what needs to be done. Nope. Section 31 had some problems, Captain. 
primarily, one being controlled by an artificial intelligence. Nope, not happening. See, me? He taps the side of his head. Completely intelligent. No artificialness up here. Wow. Well, how, can I, how can I argue with that? Some debrief this is. Hmm. Nope. Not my problem. Now, you wanted to be debriefed, Captain? That's for that's for later. Actually, that's for whatever I'm going to write up saying that I've debriefed you. Honestly, whatever you say right now has very little consequence. You'll be found you'll be found guilty. There's enough evidence against you and uh, Admiral Riker. As soon as we bring him in, shouldn't be too hard. After all, we've got some people on Earth looking for him. We know where he's running. Won't be long till he's found. I'd like to remind you that under the Federation's seventh guarantee, I have the right against self-incrimination. Yes, that's why I'm not going to bother. That's why. That's why whatever incrimination you're doing against yourself is stuff I'm going to write, personally. Pretty good at it, how, I gotta say. How thoughtful of you. Now, if you excuse me, busy, busy. <sighs> Yeah. While he walks out of my cell, I'd like to quickly scan him. He's not armed, right? But the phaser arrays are powered up outside or inside my cell? Uh, outside. Okay. But he's unarmed, though. He is. He does appear to be unarmed. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I'll give the... Um, as Plumbers is walking away, I'll go with him, but I'll give... Well, Singral will be able to to sense it on me. Do I jump him now or do we wait? Type of look feeling going to him. I do the uh, the glance as I turn turn my back and say no. I kind of shake my head and I just turn my turn my back towards the uh, exterior of the cell. Alright. You fall charmers out. Okay. Now as we go out, are those Phaser, yes. Turret uh, all the way everywhere. Uh, no, they just appeared to be in the brig section. Uh, in the main security center, it just appears that there are individuals with phaser rifles. And as right. soon and as soon as you ex as soon as you and Chalmers leave the brig, uh, those two security officers that he shooed out uh, get shooed right back in. So I happen to, uh, being on my time in Starfleet and Starfleet Intelligence, recognize any of them? Have I trained with any of them before? Um, if you wish to give me an advantage, you can spend two momentum to do so. Yeah, that's okay. okay. I don't like them that much anyways. <laughs> okay. Uh, so while they're doing that, uh, is Bash Bashir or Vayed anything that you guys are up to? Uh, getting permission Basically. to hang out with the Akashi. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. What uh, have we done with Togi spores? Oh, did you bring some? Captain was supposed to have brought a couple. Oh. Um, that's, uh, that's why we took the shuttle ah, instead yes. of being transported. Right, right, right. Thank you for reminding me. I don't remember you mentioning anything about Togi spores, so I believe that the captain probably still has them on him. Okay. Uh, well, the next the next time the uh, the force field's down, I'll release him. Okay. So well, while he should be able to fit through the vents mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, ventilation. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Vaid, you are coming across. Uh, ah, nope, wrong button. Uh, you find the Akashi. Uh, who has been just waiting around in his quarters that has been assigned to him. Is there anything that you actually wish to do with him? Uh, first scan him, just in case, like, he has something, like, <laughs> we put on Singral. Um, I don't believe that he does. Uh, Thrasher is his name. Okay. At, at Thrasher? This... Yes. At this point, uh, he understands that, you know, scanning is a way of life for you 
individuals who do not have the enhanced senses that an Akashi hunter does. Got it. Um... I'm so proud. <laughs> She's scanning and taking samples. <laughs> <laughs> You've trained her well, Commander. I know. <laughs> is for you if you don't mind answering ah uh, he uh, extends a long tongue and hisses proceed you spent some time with um oh crap it's admiral right uh admiral Riker, or do you mean director chalmers director director chalmers sorry yeah. you spent some time with director chalmers uh yes. was there anything uh, that he d did that was rather different than how we conduct, uh, I guess, life and orders here. All of Starfleet's ways are very different and alien to that of Thrashar. Thrashar does not understand yet why you proceed with proper ranks letting the weak lead the strong. No. Everything that ah, this director Chalmers did was admirable. Despite being short of stature and poor physical condition, he had a way about him that demanded respect. Yes. Poor physical condition? Well, of course. He is quite overweight. He would not... <laughs> ah, if he was to be... He would not last five seconds on Ak on Akash. No. He would be run down with the first uh, Trilocks. Oh, that would be interesting, <laughs> given the circumstances. Um, did he mistreat you while you were in over there? Early investigative sampling was very painful, yes. Needles, saws, skin regrafters, yes. Detailed medical scans were taken of Threshar to understand what I represent, the threat that the Akashi may post to the Federation. I assured him that we had no threat whatsoever, unless we decided to uh, stage a hunt election. In which case, Station Zero would be a very good hunt election ground, yes. Mm. But I am here, and I have, have no interest in becoming chieftain. So. You said skin regrafters? Yes, they took many, many, inv ah, much pain was caused. Had to uh, regrow skin. Very, uh, very delicate, the nature of our Akashi skin. Not entirely sure it's, graft it's healed right. As if to say that he attempts to become the uh, color and texture of the wall. But you can see that there are several... Um, lines and areas that are still off color representing what is most likely scar tissue oh no <laughs> he damaged you <laughs> that was not what i had intended to happen i am so sorry you endured that uh threshard makes a, a sort of a double bow gesture as if he's shrugging it it was your species way of asserting dominance i s if one of you was among our hunt clan, then we would have performed similar acts of degradation and humiliation to ensure that you knew who the alphas were. And she pauses for a second going over that. I, 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 I guess I understand that, <laughs> where you're coming from. Uh, no, no, so probing but no inserting new materials into you yourself no i am as i am as i was no additional uh, he cocks his head implants yes nope did they talk to you for lengthy periods of time oh yes <laughs> it, it, it tells. very eager to learn about uh, akashi culture my Attempt, uh, attempting to learn our chameleon techniques. Yes, yes. Our camouflage, cis, our camouflage organs are very unique and alien to your species. 
That is a great advantage that we have that you do not. Were you able to see if they were conducting any experiments on the tissue samples that they gathered from you? And did they have any success while you were there? I am uncertain. I do not... Uh, I am no... Uh, I am not. I am no scientist. I all I know is that they took skin scan. All that all they I had been there. All I know is they took skin, and attempted to see if they could figure out how to make it work. Yes, yes, but I don't think they did. And if they didn't, if they did, he does that weird double bow gesture again. That matters not to me. Has he actually done the double bow gesture to us before? Uh, no, I don't believe he has. Primarily because it's something that the GM just thought up about a week ago when he was fleshing out oh. this culture. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Did he talk to you anything uh, at any length about are um the ship you are on right now yes and the crew oh yes he has this alpha chalmers was very bombastic talked talked a lot very little action got others to do action for him if he was in a hunt clan he would have been usurped but that is not how your hunt clan works is it no no he was it very might be. <laughs> he was very eager to learn all about or he talked at great length about the Nighthawk Hunt Clan about how they were going to bring about a new era of strength for the Federation whether they liked it or not Would you say Sangral is more of an alpha than Chalmers? Yes. Yes, I would. Would you be willing to help my captain, Captain Sengral? Hmm. Um, roll, either roll me a insight or presence plus probably command test. Uh, difficulty of one, because you have done all, a lot of the legwork already. Okay. Um, if you have, uh, cultural studies or uh, alien cultures or coercion or negotiations, something along those lines would be a good focus. Aww. You got momentum. Uh, ah. Doesn't need it, apparently, because she's got the one success. Yes. Uh, yes. Thrashar will join Seng uh, Sengral's hunt clan. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ping uh, Bashir. Uh, Bashir, you're on the bridge. Commander yep. Bashir? Are, are you available? Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, I have talked to Thashar, our Akashi, on board, and he has agreed to help Captain Sengral and us in our situation. Really? Um, she'll turn to Thasher. Is there anything um, that you would require mm. for this mission? Or potential mission? <laughs> yes. What is, the, what is the prey and the objective of the hunt? Simple. Get down to uh, Chalmers. <laughs> you would have the honor of taking down the <laughs> director Chalmers, the one you do not like very mm. much. Ooh, it is it is a great honor of uh, among Akashi to be chosen to take down an alpha of an of another clan. He grins extremely wide I look for I am excited for this hunt he immediately uh, sh chameleon shifts out and begins to walk through the door and then he pauses 
shifts back what for clarification because I know Starf your Starfleet Hunt clan is squeamish about blood and organs. Is this hunt a lethal one? And he taps his fingers together in a Mr. Burns impression. <laughs> if uh, Captain Sangral says so, then yes. Hmm. But as of right now, apprehend Director Chad. As of as I'm still listening in, I would rather you not kill him. He should answer for his crimes. Maiming, maiming is okay. Haha, <laughs> 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 maiming, yes. Can maim. Have seen your doctors treat uh, significant wounds and flesh damage. Good. Feel less bad about... Uh, feel good about causing injury. Yes. And with that... As I was kind of listening in, just like, remember what he did to you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I sh it is now my turn to assert dominance. Exactly. <laughs> and with that, uh, he, sta he stalks right past Vaid and will <coughs> vanish. Literally blend already blending into the uh, USS Nighthawks complicated uh, corridor patterns. And if it wasn't for Vaid noticing the couple pieces of scar tissue that sort of, you know, cause a little bit of motion blur, you're able to figure... You wouldn't be able to know where Thrashar is. So I'm assuming there's going to be an alert that there's a ship living that <laughs> uh, <laughs> We probably should have told him, like... <laughs> <laughs> to notify the captain if he ever came across him. Mm -hmm. It'll be a surprise. Um... It'll be a surprise. <laughs> As Lieutenant Vay... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, don't worry. Uh, Helsing, wherever he's at, will be very happy with what you just did. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah, Togi is... Nope, wrong button. Togi is everywhere. Yes, Togi is everywhere. <laughs> He's everywhere. Uh, Lieutenant Fayed, as you get to the station, uh, you get a call, f or Vault Rani uh, pipes up from Operation Commander Bashir. Shuttle Bay 2 has just opened up. And the Type XX shuttle is departing, sir. I'm not detecting anyone aboard. Thank you, Ensign. I appreciate it. Uh, sir, I could engage tractor beam, sir, if you believe it to be stolen. No. Let it go. Yes, sir. Letting it go. Okay. Uh, just real quick, yes. um, while we're still here, um, has anyone gone or come in this area? Are we quiet? Such as the bridge? Or or you mean the no. area of space? <laughs> yeah, I'm bored. Is anyone is anyone talking about anything up here? No. No. <laughs> I've been in space, yes. <laughs> uh no. <laughs> Due to the remoteness of this system. Yeah. Um it's pretty much a dead zone. As long range, like or extreme sensors, pick up an occasional freighter making its way uh, from one side of the sector to the other, but this area is pretty dead. Probably why uh, Starfleet Intelligence likes it like that. Makes sense. So Jefferson, how's the uh, Parisi Square doing? Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what follows okay. is a five-minute rant about how. <laughs> How the uh, Andorian Parisi Squares team won on a technicality and how it really should have been the Tellarites. But that is Jefferson Davis's new thing, which has just been figured out this day on the last <laughs> episode. Oh, so that he's big into Parisi Squares. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Mark Smith says, you know, we got a fantasy Parisi Squares league. <laughs> and when the new one opens up, we can get you involved in the draft. Really? 
I would put some money down on the Andorians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, back to... So, does anyone wish to do anything for the next several hours, or shall we cut ahead to the inevitable beating down of Captain Singral? Oh, I want to jump to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, uh, 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 sorry. I'm not. <laughs> uh, well, did you want to do anything with with release Togi while you're in there to let him go through some of the vents? Or... Mm -hmm. oh, well, I mean, if there are vents available to me, I assume that the cell was, um, you know, closed in that sense. But if it's not, and he there's vents available, then I'll just release them from where I am. Okay. Uh, you release a couple spores of Togi, and Togi now enters the uh, systems. And what does somebody want, who wants to, whoever wants to play Togi, what does Togi going to do? Like three characters up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, this does count as an activation for Mr. Togi or Mrs. Togi. Mm -hmm. I don't think plants have gender. Well, okay, plants do have genders, but. They have gender. <laughs> well, it was Bashir and the trans baby, so. Yeah. And I have I have both open right now, and and Zach's is uh, keyed up too. Yeah. You have custody. Uh, um, is there anything you want him to do, Captain? I mean, I kind of just wanted them uh, and stand by if we needed additional people, but I wanted him to also f figure out, uh, you know, the general defenses of the station if there's anything unusual or something that we need to keep in mind. We already know the Enigma is here, but uh, right. if there's going to be any further difficulty in me contacting the rest of you guys, if you could attempt to disable it or work with Helsing, that's the oh, plan. Oh, there you go. Um, and if I can get a, anything, communication to him, it'll be see what he can do about internal monitoring and those little uh, phaser charts. Ah, sabotage. Okay, oh, yes. okay. that's what we do well. Oh, wow. Cool. Actually, good question. Mm -hmm. Is there a um, is there an Arboretum on Station Zero? Let's just say that there is. If, there are cactuses. I'm not entirely sure if I'd call it a full Arboretum, but there's definitely mm -hmm. a garden-type thing. Go there, cause an environmental systems disturbance. Go for it, Scotty. <laughs> yeah, all you did. All you. Okay. Um, I'll just push the button. Hi. Welcome aboard, Scotty. <laughs> He's Ironic, here for isn't other it? reasons, but, you know, <laughs> Tony is good. Yeah, that I'll, works. I'll control the plant. It's sure. fine. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, so of all the sets I have, we don't have one for the Arboretum. So uh, how would one cause a plant-based disturbance? Let's do daring plus security. Or... Literally, he's shooting for a nine. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking daring security might work well here. Uh, difficulty of two. So, questions. And yes. New tier. Would this station have bio neuro gel packs? Uh, considering its age, yes. Could I possibly infect the bio neuro gel packs? Holy crap. Oh. I, that's amazing. I don't see why not. After all, it was Take. literally a thing in Voyager, so yes. Absolutely. Take all the momentum. Um. And. What would, I be, a... what would I have to roll for that one? <laughs> uh, let's see. Bioneural gel packs, um, because it is actually something that I have seen done on Star Trek, and you have explained to me how you wish to go about it, I will set the difficulty to one. Uh, still, dare, uh, daring plus engineering or daring security, whichever way you want to do it. Well, give me a daring engineering, because it's a 50-50 shot. Okay. Um... Would Xenobotany work for Focus? I forgot he had that. Um, no, not in this instance. Sorry. Hazard awareness? You can give him a new Focus. 
Yep. Yeah, this Actually, is... he's got one built up, and he's got one now. Yeah, this is a activation for him. Okay, focus. Um, what would be a good focus? Uh, he's been working with the engineering department for the most part, so anything engineering related would be good. That or Show possibly back. interpretive dance or maybe karaoke, based on uh, his history with karaoke. He's already got karaoke. I was gonna say right? he already has karaoke. Oh, uh, disco ball repair. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he already has karaoke as a focus. Um, yeah. See, would power systems works? I'm trying to remember yeah. what all the bioner gel power packs systems. do, but power systems. I, I feel like yeah. they they regulated the power flow. Uh, they basically work as um end-to-end -end computer system stuff computers so, it is yeah. yeah they replaced isolinear chips right so right. they kind of work yeah they just work as data transfer or circuitry computers it works okay that'll do uh, momentum for a third eye go for it by all means go for it please do you want a fourth eye well that's a thing. Okay. So that is zero successes and a complication. I no roll anymore. <laughs> uh, welcome to the group, Scotty. You'll fit right in. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, as uh, Togi decides to begin infecting several bioneural gel packs, uh, an alarm begins to kick off, and uh, Togi is sprayed quite aggressively with a um, what's the phrase I'm looking at? with a uh, disinfectant spray that is that has been placed in the uh, that nah, that has been integrated into Station Zero as part of its bioweapons defense package. Uh, so let's say that he will take. Uh, four points of stress damage. As several of his uh, regrown spores are immediately killed, and he is forced to retreat. I just hear this whimpering in plant. <laughs> I've heard the screams of the vegetables. <laughs> So that was uh, that, and, and that basically takes Togi out for a little while until he is able to reconstitute himself and stop the pain. So, next up, so a few hours pass, and Director Chalmers walks back into the, ah, walks back in uh, to the security center. He's uh, bringing along Cap Commander Helsing because you really got to see this. And he, with a sort of a smirk on his grin that, Mr. Helsing, you're pretty sure you don't really want to see this, but you have an act to maintain. Got it. Right yeah. there, sir. Uh, Director Chalmers pulls out a, a sort of, it's a telescoping rod that extends and he pushes a button and it begins arcing electricity pick this up from uh, one of my Klingon from one of our contacts in Klingon intelligence collapsible pain stick really good for uh, well you know extracting yeah. information or at least having fun while doing it but just to let you know is when I took him down before we went over to the Black Shield, I did do a number on him. Yes. Yep, I so see. I don't it. know how much damage you can take. Uh, well, well, then it's a good thing that we have a sick bay, isn't it? And he jabs Singral in the ribs. <laughs> well, yeah, I scream out in pain. I gotta get man. Why didn't I get myself one of those? Uh, sorry, Captain. He wags a finger. This is not Starfleet's uh, standard issue. 
And I'm going to spend two... Uh, actually, I have to spend four because there's two players in the room uh, to cause a reversal, which basically means I end the scene the way I want to, which is uh, Sengral doubling over unconscious, twitching, and <laughs> Director Chalmers just laughing a bit and shouting, Medic! So we're going to have a scene change, and you're going to lose one momentum. So, anything else from the Nighthawk? Can't say that we got much we can do right now! Okay. <sighs> In the triage center. Uh, so, another couple hours have passed. So, uh, Togi, if you wish to try again, by now you've reconstituted yourself. And you can, you know, try to reinfect things. Or go about this a different way. Uh, difficulty is still going to be a one. I can try to infect one more time. Sure. I have faith. Faith in the heart. Thank you. Wrong for series. Oh, wait. That's right. You want the momentum, Sky? Nah. Well, that's well the one success. There you go. Okay. Congratulations. Um, Togi, you have begun to infect the systems of Zero Station. Uh, so I'm now giving it the infected trait, which you can spend a couple mo momentum on to gain it an advantage whenever you decide to need it. Sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Commander Helsing, it's been a couple hours. Uh, maybe about, let's say, about ten minutes instead. Because, quite frankly, Chalmers is impatient. But that still is ten minutes you have to listen to Director Chalmers bombastically uh, talk about how great uh, Starfleet Intelligence is under his rule. Uh, you may have picked up at one point... Well, okay, you have picked up uh, that had you not been as cooperative as you are now, well, he had uh, ways of using Starfleet Intelligence asset on certain starships to say mm, convince cooperation at least for the short term. You may have meant, he may have dropped the name the USS Orion which is your sister ship. Yeah, bad feeling. Yep. Uh, Captain Singral, um, you come to with a hiss at your neck, and you're looking up with a blank-faced Vulcan uh, male doctor who looks pretty stone-faced and with his uh, face etched in a near-permanent frown. Director, he is awake. I really wish that you would... Uh, need I remind you, Director, that if you continue to bring in your patient's or your prisoners in this fashion, it would be highly... It does make tending to their wounds all the more difficult. Director Chalmer just shuts, or just shrugs and mutters something about how hard it is to find good help these days. Am I, uh... Am I in a trading field right now? Or am I just on the bio bed? You're just on the bio bed. Is it just Chalmers, Helsing, Doctor, and myself? Uh, yes. Mm. I want to attempt to spring the trap, but this Vulcan has crazy strength. <laughs> and uh, I'm not in the mood for that, so... Yeah, we gotta get something with one more momentum mm -hmm. to get the infected. So, well, I'll just turn to the Vulcan doctor, I'm just going to say. Well, if you see the way that he, uh, that he roughed me up, is that what you signed on to do? When are you going to file your report? I will file my report the same way that I file all of my reports. It will be filed, it will be classified, it will be stricken from the record, and it will be dropped into the endless data banks that his Starfleet intelligence is never black box computer system. You know, Federation didn't go through all of these conflicts and all these wars for you not to 
exercise your whistleblower rights. A presence command check this kid. Sure, presence command check this kid. Uh, let's say that there is a difficulty of two because he's a Vulcan. Would uh, diplomacy work here as a focus? I'd say so, yes. Okay. Uh, so this is a fairly... Uh, so the Vulcan has obviously seen some shit. And he has uh, thrown up... Or he's either accepted that this is how his life is going to be. Or he has sold out his... Uh, he's basically sold his whatever Vulcans call for souls. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, Katra. He sold his Katra for Starfleet Intelligence. And has, he's been emotionally and mentally beaten down over years that he now just does what he's told. He is exhausted and doesn't care anymore. Well... Wasn't it that Sirach, wasn't it Sirach the one that said the spear in the enemy's side is a spear in your own? Well, I'm not your enemy, but I'll tell you, Chalmers definitely gave me one hell of a spear. Oops, wrong tokens. Uh, roll, this is going to be an opposed um, command, or opposed presence command. Um, if Helsing wants to assist, he can, but this is that would blow his cover. And he is the defense. Oh, wow, that is, uh, you need five successes. All right, then. Uh, can I spend a point of determination? You, sir. Uh, what value are you spending? Who watches the Watchmen? That's perfect. So 3d20 here. 3d20. Wow. There's the five successes you need. Congratulations. Hey, ah. hey. Nice. Wow. The, it's almost impo Im impossible to see if it weren't for your uh, empathic abilities picking up whatever his mental state is laying down. Um, but there is a small twitch in the frowny face that stares at you, followed by a imperceptible nod as he looks at you and says, "Are you, are you guilty?" Now, but I look over to Chalmers. I'll say that there's somebody else in this room that is. Helsing. Very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well. Um, as you you feel, uh, as the director continues to gloat to Mr. Helsing about how he's kept this Vulcan doctor f for 15 years, how he's completely loyal, uh, Captain Singral, you feel a Type 1 phaser being slid into your hand. Oh. Lana, I'll kindly tuck it underneath myself just to make sure I can obscure it from the director's vision. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'll continue to chat up Chalmers about amazing how he can instill loyalty the way he does. So much I can learn yes. Absolutely. from you. Not one inch of... Not one inch must be given. Nope. Strict rules, strict gut regulations... Absolute authority. That is how I've been able to run Starfleet Intelligence, and that's why it's been so effective under my rule. Well, and that's why I had to bring Singral Sing in. Just knowing that example that you've set, it, the, in that little moment of doubt I had, it it shown like a a, a a son just that it was the only way to do it. Had to. I'll interrupt this conversation at this point and just say, Director, I want to speak to my advocate. 
I have sitting here on this bio ed, and you haven't asked me any relevant questions yet. I'm impatient. Oh, fine. If you want an advocate, I will... Fine. If you want an advocate, I will reach out to the judge advocate's office. One will be here by in a week's time, I think. Well, I'd appreciate it if you would, uh, you know, do your job every once in a while instead of making me do it for you and contact them now. Fine. He... You know what? Absolutely. You are absolutely correct. I have you in my clutches. Or that, and I should be able to act under a, the authority. I don't. I should not be afraid of you and your crew of muckabouts. Nope. Absolutely. He, and he goes to. Uh, he step. He ah, steps out to leave the office. He looks back at Helsing. Goes watch him. Well, I don't. Want to, I don't actually want him to leave. Uh, a sick bay. Well, so I'll go ahead and. To do if he's something. making. Well, I want, that's when I'm going to try to stun him. Okay. Uh, control plus security. Difficulty two. <clears throat> There's three successes, so you get one momentum. And I'll use that second momentum so we. Spring our uh, trap, if that's okay with you, sir. No, go for it. Okay. And could you please refresh my memory? What is that trap? The um, Togi's infected. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, what systems are you bringing down? Um, all the internal sec in internal security and the turrets. Okay. There is a to include lock. Anything having to do with lockdown type procedures, opening okay. and closing bulkheads, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, there's no no there's no perceptible difference. Uh, the only thing, but you know what to look for, as you see the phaser emitters in sick bay, uh, go dark. Hmm. It's about this time that the or, uh, could you roll me some challenge dice, please, Singral? There's okay. That is six damage, and considering that is enough to, uh, he has no resistance because a well tailored suit does not cause, uh, res does not offer resistance. So ah, wrong button. So the director goes deleted down. him, sir. Huh. <laughs> the director goes down like a sl uh, like a sack ah! of potatoes. Roughly, it was, a, it was a Klingon disruptor. Yeah. Uh, at this time, the uh, doors to sick bay open up, at, and you catch a glimpse of two unconscious uh, security personnel on the other side. Thrashar bursts in through the doors and prepares to lunge at the director. Just as well, he I'm going down. for going for terminals as well to take that little nasty rod and everything else away from him. <laughs> Thrashar looks at him and looks at the captain. Ah. Hunt captain, Sengral. Thrashar has joined your clan. <laughs> oh, goody. Just yeah. what I've been waiting for. <laughs> he snarls at the Vulcan. Now, now, play nice. He's on our side. I'm sure oh. to have a word with Commander Bashir when this is over. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'll, I'll take that rod and tell Thresher, search him for any any weapons and don't let him move. Right. And I'll go over to the computer and start talking to Togi. At that point in time, see if you could also get a uh, low-level subspace band communication to uh, the rest of the ships outside here. Okay. We have we have Chalmers and we're in sick bay, there. But uh, kind of kind of we gotta make sure we don't arouse any suspicion. Now that we have them, we gotta find a way to get out. Okay. I was gonna say we're probably keeping a very good eye on everything, and as soon as the power power goes out and or anything noticeable happens, we'll head in. I uh, tell you what, um, have probably Vaid roll me some insight plus science, and uh, the All ship right. can assist with sensor science. 
And due to the range that you are away from the ship or from the station, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Sensors? Uh, yep, sensor operations. And that's the three successes you need. Uh, so, Vade, you notice a slight decrease in their power systems, most notably internal security. All right. Heck yeah. <laughs> Let's move in slow and steady. Okay. All right. So I tell Captain, looks like we got control of all internal monitoring. Um, these little phaser turrets, wherever they are, and opening and closing of all internal bulkheads. Well, that's good. But now we not only do we need to get him out of here, but we also need proof. So I'm going to go take uh, the unconscious Chalmers and I'm going to go into the uh, the office. You know, the, the whoever the chief medical officer here is on Station Zero, I'll go into her office in, in sick bay mm -hmm. and uh, wake him up, see if I could, uh, while I point the phaser at him, try to get him to access his files. And I say, don't try anything funny. I mean, I've already been prepared for this. I already have station security for the most part under my control. All I need for you is to give me all your, all the station sets information and all your personal logs. All both official and un unofficial and all encrypted uh, communiques that you've received since you sent the Nighthawk into the expanse. You've got to. Huh. You got the balls the size of Klingons, Captain, if you think I'm going to cooperate with you. Nope. I think that despite you having a phaser at me, I still have the advantage. After all, what are you going to do? Shoot me? That would just prove to the Federation as a whole that you are operating as a rogue agent. No, nope. No, I think I'm just going to sit right here. I'm going to keep my arms crossed. And I'm going to wait for my security, my security team to do their damn jobs. This time, probably a good time for Thrasher to go stick his head around the corner and smile at Chalmers. Well, he may do that, but I also want to go pick up that. Uh, does he still have that? Did he still have that Klingon pain stick with him? I'll try to grab it. <laughs> a Helsing. Oh, okay. Yes. Gotcha. Well, I mean, you could arc that, Mister Helsing. Hi, uh, sir. What level Oof. is this set on? Toss in the pain stick. <laughs> Uh, do, do these things have levels? <laughs> I don't even know. Yes, it has, little... yeah. it has off and on. <laughs> now I was asking Chalmers. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. This is one of your toys, and I don't know how to... I don't think we know how to handle it very well. And, you know, I have a... I'm getting old, Mr. Chalmers. I have a gigantic mangy hand. It's a nice slip. Do you think you're the first person to torture me? Nope. Not going to happen. Obsidian Order, Tal Shiar, I've done them. Did it for fun, actually. Want to see how I could do against them. You don't become the director of Starfleet if you're weak, boy. Nope. You have to be able to withstand whatever your enemy can throw at you. Being compromised is something I've, lo I've trained for. And what is your enemy exactly? Because you damn well know that it's not the Nighthawk. Why'd you set me up? Why'd you set us up? In all honesty, I <laughs> I needed someone I could find. I needed some, I sent you and the rest of the scryers out to cause a little bit of a thorn in the side of a Starfleet. I needed to ensure that whatever deep space species were out there were not oh were not met by the peace-loving beatniks of the Federation diplomatic corps. Yeah. I also needed to ensure that you were out there causing just enough chaos to keep the Starbase Remote Initiative on its toes. While I also sent you out there so that I could keep some of my best at, so I could determine which ones of you are the most loyal to my cause and which ones would be a stumbling block. You, Captain, proved to be a stumbling block. You're too 
Starfleet. You're too, you're too hype hopped up on Starfleet's talks of peace, of t and negotiation. You don't negotiate if someone's pointing a loaded phaser at you, Captain. No, you shoot first. That's not up for you to decide, Director. That damn well is. I'm the director of Starfleet Intelligence. I am the sword to Starfleet's shield. And I, it is a, my duty to decide where I strike for the best uh, for the best defense of this lo, this wonderful nation of planets. If these people, these people, as he gestures out to the rest of space, have no idea what's out there. They have no idea who's coming for them. And they have not seen what I have seen. And I am I have seen shit, Captain, and I am not going to stand by while people while bureaucrats send diplomatic teams on starships that are built for war. No. We should be protecting our borders from anything that could pose a threat. And even if, if that threat has to be encouraged to get them to see reason, then so be it. And he is turning a magnificent shade of crimson. <laughs> wow. And, and, Director, how did you ensure loyalty among many of these people? I mean, you mentioned casually that the Orion, that you had people on the Orion to ensure the loyalty in case somebody got out of line with your decrees. You had ways to put pressure on pressure points. You don't survive in Starfleet intelligence to rise to the point of directorship without fleecing those you keep closest and those you send away. Many of my agents are out there thinking, many of the agents of Starfleet intelligence think that have totally bought into the uh, what's the phrase I'm looking totally bought into the mantra that they're out there doing peaceful work but they're they don't know what they're they don't know how their piece of the puzzle fits into the great image no Starfleet intelligence is great for that talented people who I may not believe who I may not fully believe their morals but I still have use for their talents At this point in time, I want to uh, go ahead and grab a medical trans, uh, a medical uh, tricorder, mm -hmm. and actually scan Director Chalmers. All right. See if there's any irregularities, or if this is a psychotic break, or Roll if there's just something unusual about him. Roll me an insight medicine, please. I'm not. So you also have that, the Vulcan doctor. Yes, we do. I I got I got a decent medicine score. Yes. I never get to flex it, but would, I do. Would you really trust the doctor? <laughs> well, he did give me a phaser. That is true. Yeah. And I, I asked him, the, the director said that he had, he was bragging about how he had you under control for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Was he threatening family members of yours as well? Uh, you're coming through fairly hollow there, Helsing. Oop, can I ask the, um, the Vulcan doctor, is that better? That's better, thanks. Okay. Um, the Vulcan doctor says, hmm, "The director, Ch or actually, let's roll the uh, let's do the Captain Singral roll first, and then we'll do the doctor." Right. Uh, but you count investigation as a focus here. In this instance, I'd be better off if you had a neurochemistry or something along those lines. But I'll let I'll let it work. At this point. I gotta, I gotta defend it at least in terms of I'm trying to. Ex yeah. assist, I mean, I am trying to determine his medical state, but yeah. mostly in the terms of extracting or determining the ver the veracity of information. Less oh, yeah. so, me actually, you know, trying to determine his physical state. No, no, I, you, I've already said you could use it. You don't need to fight me on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That is two successes. Hmm. Uh, so what you've, uh, as far as you're able to determine. Uh, Director Chalmers' mental state appears to be that of a typical human. He does not appear to be showing any... 
any signs of uh, neur neural degradation or anything of the like. Is the, uh, I mean, I know I've been chasing the wrong leads, but I just got to ask for my own sanity. Yep. No, he is, not, universe? he is not giving your <laughs> universe shot apart. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, um... <laughs> yep, the mirror me's are everywhere. Yes. Uh, Commander Helsing, the doctor, uh, let's call him Taylock. Dr. Taylock uh, confides in you that over... Th that uh, Director Chalmers has had a series of unfortunate personal tragedies in his career um, his wife fell to a Romulan uh, his wife fell to a Romulan attack during the brief civil war uh, and he lost his two children during the Borg invasion of 23 of uh, 2380 uh, since then he has buried himself in his work and has become quite fanatic about it However, he has been ex extremely comp competent in his job. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing this, uh, USS Nighthawk, um, you yes. are detecting. Uh, you are detecting. Ah, sorry. Let me get my set pieces right here. Do, do. Uh, you are detecting a Federation ship approaching. Let me just move tokens about here. It is. It is heading towards the. Uh, it is heading towards the zero station at maximum warp, and it would be that of the USS Layden from uh, uh, Starbase Deep Space 15. And we're going to introduce the individual who you folks have been prob. Who those of you watching the video may have noticed hanging in chat for a while, Commander Dalrum of Cerberus Station fame. Uh, Commander Dalrum, you have been ordered by um, Captain Crawford to take the Leyden and assist the USS Nighthawk and Captain Singral, who has apparently been wrong, who apparently, in Captain Crawford's opinion, has been uh, wrongfully accused as being a traitor. Open hailing frequencies! All right. All right. Are you with us, Scotty? I'm here. Fantastic. Uh, your blaze, uh, you and your bridge crew are blazing to Zero Station's coordinates, which, by the way, are completely unknown to, or unlogged in the standard Federation uh, outposts listings. But you're being told to go there anyways. When all of a sudden you're being hailed from nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> I look to Zach, who's probably on the bridge with me. On screen. Hi, Luddy! <laughs> Commander Daldrum, I I believe you've recognized Commander Bashir. Commander Bashir, glad to see you're doing all right. Greetings, Commander. I see you've gotten our message. Indeed. We brought the best ship we could spare. She, she has a lot of firepower. It. Yeah, good I, to know. I don't know if. Oh wait, you have been part. Of, you are part of Cerberus. So, uh, Starfleet has, or the records that Starfleet has on the USS Laden actually indicate that it was destroyed uh, several years ago. Actually, how they're flying it now is a story that you should probably watch the Cerberus Station finale on. Yay, cross promotion. <laughs> Anyways, back to. Hey. Uh... <laughs> Yep, we got ourselves in a little situation. Uh, we're going in to save Captain Singrel and take down Starfleet Intelligence. <laughs> oh, goody. And we're along for the ride. Where do you want me to, to station? Uh, we're heading to Zero Point Station now. We'll go ahead and uh, I'll basically say the uh, cloak off and we'll head in with them. Okay. We'll follow into formation and follow you in. Okay. So, let's get the USS Layden copied over, and we're going to the USS Nighthawk. Or no, we're going to the Zero Station. Oh. Okay, so, the USS Black Shield and the USS Naginata have positioned themselves 
conveniently close to uh, both the Enigma and the Scryer. As the... Uh, Just let me make the uh, scales roughly appropriate here. There we go. Uh, USS Layden, as you approach with the USS Nighthawk, you are, or actually both of you are hailed, I should say. On screen. Okay. On screen. Sorry, just playing with layers here and messing everything <laughs> up. This is Captain Derek Price of the USS Enigma to news to USS Layden. You are indeed. Hmm. Our records show that you have that your ship should not be in service, but that is a question for another time. Are you bringing the USS Nighthawk in for uh, as per our request? Sure. Roll. Uh, roll me presence plus command if you're trying to bluff them. <laughs> and I have composure. <laughs> okay, composure works. Uh, this is going to be opposed by him. And he is... Okay, you just need one success. What in the world just... Uh, okay, that's odd. We're just going to do it this way. Yeah, let's do it that way. Um... Something must have happened during the uh, copying of the sheet. Um, let me just take a look. Well, I got a success. You did indeed. And a complication. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Um, tell you what, I'm just going to copy your sheet because that's fixed it in the past. Uh, you should now have a copy of Rescom Dalrum's character sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, try rolling that just to see if it works. Doesn't matter what you roll. It, okay, that did it. Cool. So we'll just... I like that roll better. Tough. <laughs> uh, we'll just say goodbye to the other Rescom Dolrum sheet. <clears throat> and fix them up proper. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's see. So you have a success, but a complication. Hmm. Yes. How am I going to... You know what? I'm just going to take threat for it. I was going to ask if you would. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, you think that's great. You have... I actually have a nice amount of threat right now. So. No um, Okay, so USS Nighthawk and USS Slayton, what are you guys going to do? Basically say, yeah. They brought, they're bringing us in. Okay. You could put Loxley, since we already kind of planned the, the line that mm -hmm. Bashir was friendly with the captain, and then Loxley could be the one bringing the Nighthawk in. I'm on screen with him. I mean, uh, uh, he, okay, too bad. He, yeah, yeah he work. told us that we're 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 coming. In. Yeah, I've. He's fully coming in. The Laden is bringing us in. I've surrendered to Commander Dolan. All right. Uh, the USS... Um, yeah, the communication link is severed, and the USS Scryer uh, comes around the other side to in flanking position of the Nighthawk. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid, you... Or Lieutenant Vaid and Lieutenant Loxley notice that their uh, weapons are charged and locked on the USS Nighthawk. I'm taking note of that on the laden. Duly noted. So, unless can we get a trans, sorry, can we get a transporter lock on to the captain and uh, the chalmers and uh, everyone? <laughs> uh, Vaid, uh, can you please? This is going to be a Vaid roll. Uh, sensor science, uh, given that. Let's sensor see. science. Uh, yeah, sensors are insight science for you. Sensor <laughs> science from the ship, and this is actually going to be opposed by the station. Okay. Which uh, has no security now. 
No, it has uh, internal security. Uh, it still has its shields. Ah. So, you know, it's still got some stuff going for it. Let's see. We'll for now. We'll for 20. Now. Okay, so the station got a crit, but it did not succeed any of the other rolls. So, yep, you got three successes. It got two. You are able to find... Uh, so, Ved, you can you detect the captain's life sign, that of Com Commander Helsing, that of Director Chalmers, and a weird anomaly that you suspect is probably Thrashar. You know that their species doesn't show up well on life, sands, life scans. Looks like I've got them all. All right, let's be them on board with straight to the bridge. Okay. So, um, advanced transporters, of course, are going to come into play here. Uh, this is going to be a difficult... Uh, let's see, you're not being from a pad straight to the bridge. So this is... Whew. Four. Let's see, four. We, no, we this could is, walk from transporter pad. Uh, this is difficulty five, because you're not beaming... Because uh, advanced transporters beams through shield. Uh, when advanced transporters are needed, it is a increased difficulty... So, yeah, this is difficulty five. Okay, we'll use the pads. Okay. <laughs> I digress. Okay, that brings it down to difficulty four. Okay. And if someone wishes to bring up Chief Zell. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I love your confidence there. <laughs> Zell has talent, by the way. She has talent. No and this is an activation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think she has a... Yeah, she's come a long way from uh, accidentally beaming orphans on a uh, Vitar's planet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, determination, Bob. All right. Pop it. All right. What role was it again? Uh, I had control engineering it. for you, or for Zell, and uh, sensors engineering from the ship. One from Nighthawk. And that Three. is five from Zell. I'm, you popped your determination, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not do it in that role. Okay, so, so that's all right, um, because you succeeded anyways. So. Okay, okay so. Two momentum? Uh, no, that was a difficulty four roll, so you don't get any momentum. I thought you popped your determination. Oh. I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being honest. Yeah, that was cool. Yes. That was closer than I was thinking. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, bonus. Okay. okay um, <laughs> not, not even. So, late. we're on, on on the transporter pad is now Helsing, Singrel, the Vitars, or not the Vitars, uh, uh, Akashi, Thrasher, and Chalmers. Yep. Okay, so okay. these guys go away. These guys appear. Now, um, Chief Zell, you do detect that there are uh, Starfleet phasers uh, currently charged and ready for use. Do you wish to deactivate them, or do you wish to bring them along? That's a vague question. Since... Yep. Vaid? Yep. Uh... Should we? <clears throat> Good choice, kiddo. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, the default is that all, f all transporters deactivate weapons. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point anyway. I mean, we have security guards. Assuming that, we yeah. have a diet. So, that I mean, and Thrasher's oh. right there. Yeah. yeah, and I'll grab a new one on the way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, so, Captain, as you are, just as uh, Director Chalmers finishes his... his uh, tirade. His, I think it's mid-tirade, yeah. honestly. Come on. <laughs> as, it's, as he's getting ready for the tirade second act, <laughs> you... You feel the familiar sensation of the transporter taking a, taking a, its hold over you. You materialize. Your phaser does not. And Director Chalmers 
goes from a sitting position to sitting position with no chair. So he just thumps straight onto thumps. the uh, transporter pa pad. Worth it. And it is worth it. And three security officers immediately have their Type 2s drawn and pointed. Well, good work, everybody. We've got what we came for. Now it's time to get out. Escort Director Chalmers to the brig. Maximum security. Uh, good work, yeah. Chief, though. So, yeah. on the bridge, um, Loxley is obviously... Now, let's have Loxley stay at Tactical and Zonar be down there. That would make more sense. Uh, yeah. Loxley immediately chimes up. Sir, there... Uh, sir, they're about to, as the USS Enigma detects the transporter and begins to fire. Yeah. And I am spending <laughs> complication for the threat that they fire first. First. I'm sure you would. Yes, indeed. So... Let's cut ourselves back to the, uh, where's Zero Station next year? There it is. <clears throat> so, USS Enigma is going to attempt to shoot at the USS Nighthawk. Uh, given how close everyone is, I am going to say that you guys are at medium range. And I will do. I am going to spend one threat for one extra kudos. <gasps> And they managed to successfully hit. <coughs> so. They get to roll me some challenge dice. Which I believe for a Guardian class cruiser is not insignificant. Uh, nope, that's the Naginata. We'll get to them soon enough. There it is. You know, I had all this time to get the character sheets open and, you know, do all that stuff, but no, I was far more interested in Chalmers' rant. It, it works. It, it was works. a good rant, so were we. I was say. Yeah. It was worth it. Oh, it wasn't Singrel quality, but <laughs> it mean, was it was know. good. Singrel is a stronger alpha. So. Yes, yes. Uh, so that is five... Ooh, do I want to... Yeah, I'll spend one point of threat to re-roll those zeros. Which, da, 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 da. that would be four zeros for challenge dice. That's a grand total of 11 points of damage. Uh, you oh. are... And our shields are down. <laughs> no, you're scale five, so you negate five of that immediately. Um, <gasps> but you take, so you take six stress. And unless you are able to somehow uh, get... Uh, bring that down by two to two points. That's enough to cause a breach. Ah, that would be your communication system takes a hit. Uh, so you <coughs> and we are now going to be in combat. They have five actions left. Uh, so, Sangral, as you are b congratulating your crew on a job well done and giving pre or preparing a roasting speech of your own, the ship vibr or the ship jostles under your feet, and Chalmers falls again. <laughs> yes, yes, he does because it's hilarious. We both wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm still going to, uh, while the rest of the security guards escort Chalmers to the brig, I'm not going to go to the bridge. I'm going to go to the to sick bay. Okay. My plan is to uh, use the communications device that we implanted ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I want to see how my conversation with Chalmers. I want to use that as admissible evidence. Ah. So I'd like to attempt to uh, broadcast that to the Enigma or Station Zero, whoever is firing at us at the time, since I'm obviously unaware of it. Mm -hmm. I think that information is more important to get out than uh, me going to the bridge at the moment. Okay. That is perfectly acceptable. So, now... Toki can also 
send that same information because he was recording it with the um, the advantage we had with his uh, hacking of the bioneural gel packs. So he could just turn the entire station into a broadcast center. Yep. Yeah. Well, you can try. Okay. Uh, good guys get to go. So Layden, Nighthawk, or if you want the Naginata or the Black Shield to do something, I can roll for them. I also right. have quick action on Dolorum, so we get an, to retain the initiative. Yeah, nice. we need to get shields up on. Yeah, Nighthawk. that's my first first thing I'm doing is shields up. Okay. All right. So, These were full shields. Yeah, good sure. thing you were at full. So, who's doing what? All right, like I said, shields up. Okay. Um, can I get the strand to work on communications? Sure. Is that like, I, I don't remember how that works with getting that back up, but. Um, I bel If it's just a breach, I believe it can be restored as a minor action. Okay. So that will not take up any... Uh, well, unless you want to do a different minor action this round, but... I'm not sure. Is that is my shields count as I'm telling them to put the shields up considered a minor action? I'm going to assume that they were up to begin with, just because otherwise that would have been um, six damage straight to the ship itself, and that would have sucked. I at least want to give you a okay. chance, you know? Appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, minor action, get the Shran on getting communications back up, because okay. I want to talk to the other ships. Okay. And we will fire. Okay. Who are we firing on? Uh, the Enigma. Do you want to use the anti-shield torpedo, sir? I don't want to do much damage. I just want to take them out. Um, can we? Oh, it's really high to aim something specific like that, though, isn't it? No, the, we have four torpedoes that will take that are designed to take shields down. All damage goes to shields. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now I should mention right. that you are at medium range, and torpedoes are long. So, um, so if you want to shoot torpedoes, it is actually going to be a uh, control security difficulty four. Unless you want to spend your first, you know, ship action uh, to move zones. Well, Loxley's up at the bridge. Yeah. Right. She's on stage. All right. So, yeah. All right. So, we'll back up and aim at the Enigma. Okay. So, that... Okay. So, that is the helm action. Done for the ship. And I believe that I had called Helm as purple. Anybody who actually knows rules for Starfleet co for Star Trek Adventures Combat is probably grimacing right now, but hey, it is what it is. Okay. Nighthawk is moved out to long range. Now, Scott, we got if automatic... you want to take your if you want to take your continue action and then do something, you are more than welcome to next. Sure, we're close to the range to the scryer, right? I uh, you are Yes, I will say that you are close range to the Scryer. Aim fa phaser cannons and fire. Cool. I'm disabling it before I can get the jump on us. Nice. Fair. Okay. Uh, Hi, laddie! And Dolrum's going to take this one for the actual firing action. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll cheer you on, though. <laughs> Okay, uh, controls... Because yeah. I'm going to actually... Uh, thank you, Crawford. I'm going to activate my Star Cross. Ooh. And uh, double my focus range. Nice. Ooh. Okay, so... Um, as uh, someone wants to pick up the Laden, uh, this is going to be control security for Dolrum, and the Laden will assist with weapon security. I'm going to give you a point of threat. Uh, I got the Laden. Time. Okay. All right. I'm so glad we were able to make a one friend... <laughs> The amount of time that we played this campaign, we have one person that we can rely on. That's nice. <laughs> okay, uh, Layden does well, and Daldrum does well. I'm, so I'm going to reroll that zero. Okay. Because bold, I should not have rerolled that zero. You Although should. the one 
is a crit. Yes. The because I, is crit. I doubled my crit. Yep. So we have four successes on the field. Okay, so you have four successes on the field and one complication. And you are... Uh, so roll me the challenge dice for your null phaser cannons, please. Which is nine? I don't remember how many challenge dice we actually get. Uh, I think Helsing has the sheet open. <gasps> it says nine on the sheet, but okay. that's... That sounds right, then. Yeah, that's what it would be. Yep. And I put two momentum or the two floating that we have, that Leighton has. Yeah, right. Okay. Um... So, okay. Uh, well, you the phases are versatile too, so you can, you have two momentum to do something with him. That's in addition to the two floating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you. Have um. Two so floating. we're gonna reroll those zeros because Scryer's scale five. Uh, Scryer scale five. Yes. I say dump the two uh, versatile into piercing. Okay. To get rid of four of the resistance. Okay. And one of our momentum is going to be used to re-roll the, all the zeros that I decided to roll on Challenge Die. Sure. Okay, so after all this is said and done, you have one momentum left? Yes. Cool. One, two. Nope. Yeah. Okay, so that is... Nine total damage, one resistance remaining. Okay. Eight damage to shields. Eight damage to shields. And, and a breach. The scryer has. You a scryer has. Two, three, four, five, six. And just because I think it's fun if somebody else rolls, uh, does someone want to play the uh, or use the uh, system hit macro? I like pressing buttons. Okay. But we already got it covered. That would be structure. Oh, boy. Fun. Not that it really matters if someone gets injured, because we only... We don't know anyone on that ship, so... Sorry, Cap. <clears throat> okay. The uh, ship uh, takes a pounding for, as the Yosas Laden strafes its ventral hull, uh, breaching uh, somewhere along its uh, starboard side. Needless to say, the USS Scryer is quite surprised. Um, the USS Layden's uh, phaser cannons are not the shiny orange that is typical, but rather uh, orbs of blackness. For to understand why, please watch the uh, USS or the Cerberus Station season finale. Yay! Cross promotion. Okay, so that is the USS Layden's turn. And that was my quick to action. So now the other guys have to go, I guess. Now the other guys have to go. <clears throat> uh, so USS Scryer will do its turn. And uh, you're currently close range to it. Mm -hmm. And it is medium range to the Nighthawk. Um, given that the Laden is the current threat, it's going to maneuver. Uh, it's going to maneuver back towards... The uh, USS Naginata, who they're under the mistaken belief that they're actually still on their side. Uh, so that they're now medium distance to the laden, and they're going to attempt to scan for weakness. Ooh. So. No extra threat dice here. <laughs> That is one crit, and scan for weakness also works. So, yep, that is a success. So, they the have... has no weakness. Have, they have scanned your weakness. Or whatever it may be. It's just a little itty-bitty pinprick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thermal that exhaust port. That one scale on the belly of weight. <laughs> okay, good guy's turn. Um, Black Shield, Naginata can go, or the Scryer. Uh, Recommend the Nighthawk shoot the Enigma. torpedoes to knock down yeah, the Enigma Enigma with Shield. The torpedoes. Yeah, yeah. And the Let's other not one have the Naginata and it. the Black Shield blow their cover quite yet. Okay. Um, so you uh, you need to spend a. Okay. Yep. Nope. Never mind. Your communication system is up. I remember now. Okay. Yep. Okay, so you're just holding the Black Shield and Naginata in reserve until, well, it's time. 
So, if you're going to launch a shield torpedo, which I believe we had ruled as a typical photon torpedo, except it has vicious one, but only deals damage to shields. Is that correct? Correct. Cool. Correct. And if I do it as a spread, how many would it use? So, I will get... Uh, so, you would spend three of them, and I would get three threat. Okay. No, sorry, you'd, you'd spend four torpedoes, and I would get three threat. Yeah. So that It'd would be, be all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be worth it. Which is fine. Okay. And Loxley will pop her determination, my crew, my family. Okay. And control security. Okay, so that's two successes from... Loxley, I need to see one more from the ship. On the way. <clears throat> okay. Way. That's... And it's total of four. Yeah. Because she popped her oh, determination. Yeah, determination. And a complication. Cool. Uh, so what I am going to say is that... Um, hmm, for a complication in this instance... I believe that one of the torpedoes is going to blow, is going to detonate before the rest, um, meaning that the spread does not take effect. Uh, so I believe that is still, however many challenge dice a photon torpedo is. Um, I don't have that up right now. I have it up. Okay. Uh, five. So. Okay. Fifteen. Hang on, let me look up the rules for spread. I want to make sure I got this right. It gives like vicious, and we said that there were plus three to shields. Let's see. Spread is the one where it acts as a separate dam, separate hit with half the power. Yeah. yeah. Is another breach or something? Yeah. Well, it acts as a, a completely separate hit. No. Okay, spread effect. Attacks using torpedoes have a base difficulty of three. Where does it have the spread effect? There it is. Attack inflicts additional damage elsewhere on the target. If one or more effects is rolled, the attack inflicts one additional hit to a random system. So even if we're talking shields, that's fine. Yeah, okay. So one so, torpedo... Yeah, so roll me challenge dice, and depending on the number of effects rolled... Uh, the effects will be rolled less. One less effect will count. All right, so a typical torpedo is five. Yeah. Okay, so please roll me five challenge dice. But we said it was uh, plus three challenge dice and all damage just to the shields. So uh -huh. eight. Yes, that's... Yes, please. No effects, I'm afraid. That's... But you could, you know, you have one momentum. Yeah, burn it. Actually, you have two momentum, so... Okay, so spend that one... Spend that threat to re-roll those four zeros. Still none. Oof, well, that's Got still... Nine. Yeah, nine damage. Uh, so whatever the... Um, it still does a significant portion of damage to the uh, ship's shields, dropping it significantly. Yeah. But the Guardian, whatever the Guardian class cruisers are, they're made of sterner stuff. I don't believe their shields have gone <laughs> down. Um, but that also counts is enough damage for a breach. So if someone wants to roll on the breach table. Captain, since I stole it the last time, you can do it. Structure again. Structure again. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, just because I say that it's the damage shields primarily, I'm just going to call that a shield overload. Or at least a shield emitter overload as part of their shields fail temporarily until they get it back up. Next up is one of the one of my guys which in this instance is going to be the station. Oh yeah, that thing can go. 
Yeah, it has things. Uh, let's see. So, Laden is medium range to the station and long range to the Nighthawk. Uh, currently, the Nighthawk is the um, threat. Sorry, just let me make a couple notes here. Okay. Zero station will roll. I will spend threat. Uh, it's going to launch a... Let's see. It's just going to launch a single torpedo at the USS Nighthawk. And because it has... I believe it has quantum torpedoes, it will spend its minor action to calibrate. And then it's going to launch... Well, there's a complication. Uh, and only one success. Yep, you only get two success. Only two successes. Uh, so the USS Nighthawk. Or here's how this plays out. Um, Togi's infection uh, detects what's going on and decides to countermand said order. The torpedo is still fired, but its guidance systems are mucked up beyond belief, and it just sails harmlessly into the void and detonates against a nearby asteroid. And that is basically going to take a, uh, let's see, I'm going to call that a breach to its weapon system, so it's going to have to restore that as a minor action if it wants to fire again. <coughs> so, who wants to go next? I would like to. Um, I want to open communications to everyone in the area. Okay. <laughs> um... If you wish to spend the minor action, um, uh, Singral can go down and literally jack into the medical s system as its communi as its minor. So if you want to open hailing frequencies to everyone in this area, then that would be your major action. Okay, that works. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Captain Singral, you make your way into sickbay, and without more without even time to think you've already thought you're you've already communicated tele telepathically to uh dr coax who is already waiting for you with the con with the necessary hypo spray and the uh, usb port to plug the back <laughs> of your brain in and well, if... i knew my unsanctioned research would come in handy one day <laughs> So now, okay, but I... I would like to make an announcement real quick before oh, he yeah. starts his broadcast. Basically, as like, I want everyone to stand down. Like, Federation should not be firing on the Federation. This uh, is a pointless, meaningless battle, and everyone needs to stop. Okay. Um. So first of all, you, I need the ship to roll ha the hailing frequencies roll, please. Uh, so probably Rani, uh, as the Shran is busy keeping the uh, ensuring that the Nighthawk stays together during combat. If someone could pick up uh, Miss Rani and roll a control plus engineering, and the ship will assist with um, communications plus engineering, and this is going to be a difficulty of two, and that is three successes from Miss Rani. Cool. That's one momentum. So, uh, congratulations. You're, you've are you broadcast everything out. Um, but it doesn't appear that anyone is actually actively powering down their weapons. But now, uh, Singral, your data is being transmitted out. I'm assuming that's what you want done. Is that so? It is. Cool. Um, t normally I'd have, this would be a hell of a presence command test. How do I want to roll this? Um, do presence command. I yeah. gotta, I'll just okay. try to get everybody to listen. Tell me what, uh, roll. Pr so captain, if you could please roll me presence plus command, this can be assisted by both, Bash both Bashir and the Nighthawk. Uh, in this case, the Nighthawk will use computers plus 
science or computers plus engineering one or the other uh, this is going to be a difficulty five just to get everyone to stop said computer science or security uh computer science or computers engineering okay they're the same Okay, one from the Nighthawk. Not from Bashir. Captain Singral. I'm I'm going to think about what I want to do to uh, augment okay. this role. Okay. So determination is cumulative. So. Yeah. Uh, so you want to challenge something. Or if you have a save milestone. Yeah, if you have a save milestone, you can spend it to gain one more determination. Oh, yeah, you probably uh, do. I... Plenty I'm of those. Sure <laughs> I have plenty of those. We'll go do that. Okay. So you spend a milestone to get a determination, mm -hmm. which you immediately immediately burn. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Any momentum? Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, spend momentum for to see if I could get this any any better. Okay. I was reading over my talents. So that is two momentum for a fourth dice. If you want to give a, if you want another one, it's going to have to be a fifth. Or it's going to have to. You're, you, uh, da, da. If you want to get a fifth dice, you'll need to spend. Th give me threat. Mhm. Mm no, I'll I'll go with a forty twenty. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Well, that's the um, five successes you need. Uh, so over the... Uh, so what what happens now is going to go down in the um, annals of Starfleet intelligence history as, the, as what not to do when you are the director or admiral of Starfleet intelligence is to go off on a long rant when you have assumed that you have already won. Because that long rant is now being played over to every Starfleet ship, intelligence ship within the uh, sector. And it... Um, uh, uh, Vaid and Loxley, uh, both of you determine after waiting a tense few seconds, uh, the USS Enigma and the USS Scryer both drop their weapons, and Zero Station keeps its weapons on, but drops target lock. It appears that they are busy fighting uh, some sort of infection in their computer system. I would say it's about this time that... Uh, uh, Helsing, you have uh, successfully gotten the director to the brig and have made your way onto the bridge. Yep. There is a bit of confusion going on. Um, the USS Scryer is attempting to res get orders from uh, Director Chalmers, who no longer appears to be on the station. Uh, someone, someone by the name of uh, Captain Kristoff has uh, relayed orders to stand down, and someone named Captain Kristoff is broadcasting that he is about to take command of Starfleet Intelligence until someone else tells him what to do. It turns. The laden will stand down. Mm -hmm. And the USS Nighthawk? Stand down. Okay. It's, um... Because you're all Starfleet intelligence ships, except for maybe the Laden, uh, you all detect the incoming ship. Uh, long before it actually shows up. A large Starfleet <laughs> vessel drops out of warp at the extreme end of everything. And it appears that the token is not loading properly because of reasons. So, let me fix that really quickly. 
Otherwise, <coughs> this is just not going to be all that dramatic, Drama. is it? Yeah. It's the Vatars. Yeah. No. It's their battle fleet. Yeah. It's oh, Jack, the way the finals. I'm glad that you got my opportunity. <laughs> 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 Why is that? I not? tried to get the Vatars oh, involved. Sake, you stupid thing. Token editor, update everything. There. Let's do that instead. It is scale seven, larger than all the other ships here, almost on par with the station itself. The USS Enterprise F drops out of warp and makes its way in, and all of you detect weapons locks. A blanket wide hail. Um, uh, ah, a blanket wide hail is sent out across the sector. This is Admiral William T. Riker of Starfleet Command. You are all hereby ordered to stand down. Anyone who Already doesn't... Already have. Good. <laughs> all ships are ordered to take to enter the dry dock of Zero Station where they will be secured by Starfleet uh, security personnel. Anyone who wishes to uh, lodge a complaint about such action may take it up to the Starfleet Commander-in-Chief. Does... And he is looking over all of you, just begging someone to take take on the uh, Federation's flagship. Uh, Quickly, how fast is the Enterprise F? <laughs> uh, sorry, what was that? How fast is the Enterprise F? Do we, do we uh, know Isn't their maximum warp? At, at this point, in the, I, I was trying to crunch numbers some time ago, trying to figure out max warp. And at this point, Federation technology has pretty much maxed out its warp speed at warp 9.98. Uh, at this point, it's more of a uh, how much, how long can you sustain that power? And the Enterprise mm -hmm. F can sustain that for days. Gotcha. Uh, in the background, you see, try, you see an individual who's trying not to look too smug and failing miserably, uh, that of Admiral Thomas Riker. Oh, so he's on board. Good. Yeah. Oh, goody. Yes. Pizza Daddy. <laughs> I don't think that Dolrum ever actually met with Riker. I don't think so. In the, in the entirety of Cerberus, I don't think he ever actually met Riker. Uh, no, I don't believe William Riker ever made either Riker made their way out to uh, Cerberus. They had their proxy admiral instead. Yes. He's a little underwhelming. Yeah, the Nighthawk got to deal with the also ran, so that was fun. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll hail them. All right. Uh, William T. Admiral William Riker picks it up. Go ahead, Nighthawk. Admiral, we have Commander Chalmers, or however you want to talk to his rank, on board the Nighthawk. He's in the brig. Um, we surrender him fully to you. He, uh, cla he claps his hands, stands up. S excellent. I shall, I shall, ah, I shall uh, send coordinates to our brig. And quite f uh, so. And that's as soon as chief of security, yeah, as soon as chief of security can get him up to you, we'll hand him over. Okay. Nighthawk out. And this is pretty much where I ex where the plot has run out, folks. So this is from now on is entirely player based stuff. Because I was Finally. expecting ship combat to run a lot longer, or maybe a protracted invasion of the station itself. But by now, I don't know why I was expecting this to go any differently. Anyways. <laughs> I can now unload my secret plan. Yep. Maximum warp straight to the uh, quantum jump. We escape into the expanse. <laughs> Make our way to the Vatars now. What's <laughs> happening? Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Okay. I have the director of Starfleet Intelligence on board. I have all the secrets that I need. Give them to a foreign power. I'm in charge <laughs> here now. Uh, 
That is so close to current events that it's not even funny. Anyways. Right? Uh, Captain Sengral, you uh, come out of your um, brain jacking and make your way to the bridge. Captain Only... on the bridge. That is the last time that I'm going to test any of my own experimental technology that I ordered in my own head. And what was I thinking? <laughs> I mean, putting it in wasn't so bad, but getting that data out, I have a massive headache. Commander Dolrum. What's with the teeth, sir? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna oops, excuse that comment for now. <laughs> yeah, I'd be escorting um, okay. the director or ex-director to the Enterprise. Okay. I'm not just gonna beam him by himself. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, sorry, you were going I to hail Dolrum? I was going to hail Dolrum, yes. And Commander Dolrum, let me be the first who uh, thank you. And let me ex ex express my extreme happiness that you were able to respond to our call. You know, given the nature of our work, we don't necessarily get the chance to make so many friends. But I'm glad you were able to uh, come out and help us on this one. Uh, the Nighthawk is always welcome at Deep Space 15. We might have some yeah, touchy relations, but we're still family out here. I'm happy we were able to come to your assistance. Now let's see if I can get out of this. With the Admiral. <laughs> well, I've done most of the legwork with one of them. Now I just got to go finish it up with the other. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, well, we're going to need it. In any case... Once we're out of this, make sure to give my regards to Captain Crawford. We'll do. Although it'd be nice if you could come out and give it to himself, to yourself. Yeah, we'll see about that if uh, after the uh, the trial, and we'll see where things lay. <laughs> but uh, you know, if that's the you know, if I'm uh, if I'm not in irons again, and ones that I can't get out of, then um, I'll definitely take you up on that. Sounds good. I need to get back to the station. I still got foam in my nether regions. Oh, that was an image, Zax, that I did not need. <laughs> <laughs> Better than not eating any more of that grog. <laughs> uh, you're all funny. Okay. As long as the council didn't catch your beard on fire again. It smelled like burnt hair for a week. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep it short from now on. <laughs> Let's do it. The ship still kind of has its new ship spell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, in that case, I'll want to go ahead and uh, hail both Admiral Rikers. Well, it's like speaking to stereo. As yep. <laughs> both Admiral Rikers appear on screen. Admiral Riker. Admiral Riker. Captain Crawford. Let me be... Singral? <laughs> or, yeah, Captain Singral. Sorry. I had the other... <laughs> this is why I don't cross over my games because I mix up the characters. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, uh, Captain Singral. I'm sure Thomas here has already explained the majority of the situation for you, but for it to let it be official, let me lodge my official complaint against Director Chalmers and the actions that he has taken and has, has being the director of Starfleet Intelligence. I've taken him into custody and I suspect him I suspect him from leaking information and treason. Uh, ah, Admiral Thomas Riker leans back in a chair and just lay, lays his uh, fingers across his chest in a yes, yes, yes kind of motion. <laughs> uh, Admiral William T. Riker uh, leans forward. Captain Singral, we have had... Starfleet or Starfleet has long had a tenuous relationship with Starfleet Intelligence under Director Chalmers. However, he was always able to... Uh, he was always able to produce results when, ne when necessary, and the intelligence he provided was usually quite accurate and very detailed. However, if this, if these accusations are as Admiral Riker and you 
have stated, and at the moment I have no reason to believe that they are not, then I will... Then you can rest assured that Starfleet Intelligence is going to have to undergo a severe change in a severe change in management. Just out of curiosity, who got to you first? Was it your brother, or was it uh, any of my birds that I sent? Uh, he side eyes, or uh, William Riker looks at Thomas Riker, and. Despite not liking each other, we have we understand one another fairly well. And let's just say that he is one individual I choose not to play poker against. We have our means of communicating that even Starfleet Intelligence doesn't know about, and quite frankly, we'd prefer to stay that way. There are certain perks to our level of rank, Captain. However, I don't. your your um information was a was a wonderful amount of collaboration. Yeah, that's all great, but I want to know who was faster, who got there first. <laughs> Sorry, Captain. He nods to he nods back to Thomas. You'll never yeah, can't outfly a Riker. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, we'll see. In uh, another 50 years, once these records are unsealed, I'll figure it out. <laughs> just trying to, just trying to uh, protect your uh, your Riker image, I see. <laughs> yeah, you really got the poker face going on there well. I know I won. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, maybe, well, it's, maybe it's his experience of being married to a Beta Z. Um, but... William Riker's uh, emotional state is as unreadable as his face. <laughs> we'll s meet us in meet us in one of the debriefing rooms on Zero Station, Captain. Bring us bring whichever crewmen you crew members you believe appropriate. This is going to be one hell of a debrief. Understood. Single out. Enterprise out. As as he's uh, disconnects it. You just can't he help but hear him say, You know how much I've missed saying that? <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn to the rest of the crew that's on the bridge. And just say, there's not really much else for me to say. Words can't express how well you all performed, especially under pressure in the situation that you've taken care of. I'm sure after the end of all of this has happened... You'll all get all the medals that you'll never be able to tell your family about. All right. I will stand up and start to applaud. All right, Mr. Blue knows he can sit back down now. Follow <laughs> suit. As uh, Ranny, Ranny and Jefferson stand up to do the same. Ah. If they're applauding, Vade's applauding too. She's following yeah. suit. Yeah, Helsing goes up, stand, nods towards uh, Loxley and Togi as well. Yeah. I'm gonna go fix my face, Commander. You have the bridge. <laughs> I, Captain. Okay. Uh, so, needless to say, the next few days of debriefing are rather thorough, uh, rather tedious, and not really a good role-playing game scene. Uh, so, um, Lieutenant Ved, as I do feel very bad for not having much for you this finale, is there any scenes that you'd like to do with your... either by yourself or with other players? Or with NPCs? Uh, I guess with Commander Helsing about the point where he punched the captain wants to learn that hook he did. <laughs> All right. So how exactly did that happen? <laughs> in in between debriefing sessions, finds the two of you on the holodeck. And we'll just go over it with holodeck dummies. Well, holodeck representations of the captain. <laughs> have to make it as realistic to the situation as possible. So here's what you do. We'll walk through it slowly. It's so scary. <laughs> he looks just like him. 
I don't want him to yell at me later. They're holograms. I programmed them not to talk. Is he not going to be able to see? The oh, hologram? No. That's well, not very realistic. <laughs> at least no. <laughs> the captain not talking. <laughs> oh, no, that is true. Uh, um, so you threw the punch from the right to the left, but you hit him this way. I I don't know how you got that much force. Years and years of practice in honing. So we just keep doing your 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 training. We keep working with uh, Chief Chief Noel and the rest of the security team. We'll get you down where you can do something similar. And because I find it hilarious, uh, as uh, Ved, you turn to uh, leave the deck, while all of a sudden Threshar demon or de camouflages and lunges at Captain Singral's neck, bites it open, and holographic <laughs> blood spews everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you need to keep him on a leash? <laughs> are we not practicing unarmed takedowns? Um, yes, we are. And I... Th- I would love to learn some of the, the moves that you have for Shar. Yes. I am happy to teach fellow uh, uh, fellow hunt clansmen. Uh, I, I look forward to it and hopefully I'll be able to share with you some of what I know. Yes, yes. With that, with that you're never at a point where you can't learn something new. I will take note of that. <laughs> She's still kind of horrified at what she saw. <laughs> Computer, dematerialize the mess on the floor. Generate ten more captain simulacrums. Acknowledged. Oh my word! <laughs> uh, and the uh, fight scene will last for a while, but. Um... Commander Bashir, is there anything that you'd like to do? Uh, yes. Uh, during my uh, like breakdowns mm-hmm. and stuff like that, uh, going through everything that's happened uh, with the admirals and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I would like to suggest to them that uh, I think Singral would be adamant and be the best choice to take over Starfleet Intelligence. Okay. And I would wish to uh, turn in my resignation and leave the Nighthawk. Uh, at the moment, they are not willing to accept any resignations until the debriefing and the trials are completed. Uh, however, once the trials are completed, they are more than willing to discuss whatever your future career path may lead. And in all honest, uh, in all honesty, they are. Due to the unreliable nature of Starfleet intelligence operating under a single uh, commanding figure, they are going to be promoting their. Or Starfleet intelligence is going to move to a, a dual command system, where one could hypothetically keep an eye on the other. Admiral Thomas Riker, of course, and <sighs> Admiral Singral. Assuming uh, uh, Captain Singral wishes to accept their promotion, of course. No. I most definitely do not. I'm done with my secrets. Oh. I have had an eventful journey, but, and I, I mean, I, you know, I enjoyed the friends we made along the way, but getting more of them is not, uh, is not exactly my intention. I'll assist in the transitionary period. And I'll recommend some other candidates. But uh, finding somebody to crew the Nighthawk was my top priority. And sorting out the mess with Director Chalmers is my next one. And after that, I, I, I need a vacation. A very long one. There's a little little a little village somewhere with a Andorian female that you want to go find. <laughs> there very much is. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, uh, so, 
I bel Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to do? I think Helsing has a little minor one he wanted to do. Yeah, um, two things on my end if nobody else wanted to go. <coughs> All you did. Uh, first one, um, kind of during the debriefings, send a note out to the sister telling that things seem to have settled down, but to still keep an eye out for the Mirami because that situation has not been resolved and checking up on her security procedures for that. And then the last bit is when I sign off, um, so that I have, uh, something I need to do that I made a promise to, uh, our engineer about, and I walk on down towards uh, the medical bay area mm -hmm. and I uh, knock on the door to what is her name? Never go down there too much when I'm yeah. when you're fully been avoiding been avoiding this place. Like is that was it Nurse um, Joy? Uh might have been this Nurse Joy if you're looking for the yeah, person I It's Nurse guess. Joy. Yeah. Um she Oh you have ten joy, you got a minute? Uh her uh I her, uh, she begins to smile. Yeah. Uh, Commander Helsing. I'm actually been expecting you for some time. Do please come in. Yeah, I have a feeling we have a lot to talk about. Of course. And as the door closes you she begins to extol what or she begins to explain the uh, counselor patient confidentiality uh, that in, and the additional security measures taken to ensure that Starfleet intelligence does not get access to uh, confidential medical information. Works for me. All right. Does anyone have anything else? If not, doesn't sound like it. Well, then I would like to take this time as a GM to thank every single one of my players, because without them, I am literally nothing. These stories would not be aired. No one would know what the heck is going on inside my head. And these guys play it out far better than even I can imagine. So I'd like to thank Wolf Dog as Captain Singral, Gate Jumper as Commander Bashir, San Bay as Commander Helsing, uh, Kaladath as Lieutenant Commander Thrushran, and Ranker Bait as Lieutenant Vaid. You guys have been a hell of a crew, and I hope to do more with you guys in the future, whether it be as a group, as a GM, as a player, whatever. Um, I'd, of course, like to recognize those players that couldn't make the entire journey. Stuff happens. People have to drop out for reasons, but hey, you guys help build this. You guys help build the Nighthawk, too. And, of course, cool. I would like... Sorry? No, I was just <laughs> saying, COVID, you're always in our heart. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I cannot do this. Uh, and of course, I thank the audience, whether you're listening tomorrow, whether you're listening five years from now. I do appreciate your viewership. There's, and of, and of course, I have to thank ELH for providing for his mentorship and hosting this stuff on his channel, because without him, I would not have gotten into this game in the first place. So, on behalf of myself, all my players, past and present. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.